Hey everyone, the Talking Dads podcast is brought to you by Little Scholars Early Learning Center. Whether your family needs infant care, a preschool program, or before and after school care, Little Scholars' highly rated step-up to quality programs provide quality early childhood education at an affordable price. Visit www.littlescholars.net to get in contact with an enrollment specialist and schedule a tour of any of their five Lake County campuses. Here's the deal. Talking Dads fans are getting a little bonus. Mention that you heard about them uh, through our podcast and when you tour and you'll receive $25 off of your registration fee. Again, that's Little Scholars Early Learning Center where children learn, play, and grow together. We are also brought to you by Pub Fredo Gastropub. Uh, Pub Fredo was voted Best Gastropub in Cleveland in 2019 by Cleveland Magazine Silver Spoon Awards. We love Pub Fredo. Their menu is chef-inspired, always pushing the limits of traditional pub fare. Uh, the other night I had a burger, I believe it was called the Pub Burger. It was incredible. Cooked perfectly. It was amazing. Uh, and you won't have a problem pairing your favorite item on the menu with their great selection of local craft beers, crafted cocktails, and of course, an amazing bourbon and whiskey selection. I went with the uh, Bullet 10-Year. Uh, with my pub burger all of this in a cozy fun comes you our atmosphere you can check them out at pubfredo.com and on facebook and instagram at pubfredo gastropub we are also brought to you by marky fresh barbershop in Menor, ohio bro i love marky fresh it's the best isn't it dude i get cut there like every three weeks my kid gets cut there eh, every, month every and now and then so month and a half two months something like that they do such a good job the environment I, is phenomenal. Everybody's awesome there. Can I tell you a secret? Please. I don't even give a shit about the haircut. It is so much freaking fun going there. Just to hang out. Yeah. I have such Just a have good, a good time. time. Every time, man. Yeah. You but get you get caught. They you want to you want to be in there they're fast. Oh yeah. Their whole app, everything, oh, booking to get so in. Easy. It's so convenient and easy, but you get caught up oh, yeah. because you just want to hang out and talk with these guys. You know what the word is? shenanigans shenanigans so many shenanigans you don't want to leave <laughs> it's so much fun but honestly they do do a fantastic job they really do i look way better when i leave than when i get you re- in there. really do i i know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah marky fresh yeah book, book at markyfresh.com book get in stay fresh hey what's up guys thanks for tuning in to another episode of the talking dads uh this week's special guests are mike palladini and danny polisi they are the co-founders of penelope bourbon and i'm here to tell you if you haven't heard of them you haven't tried their bourbon uh you need to um we had a fantastic time uh, over zoom talking about the the how they really got started um and and it's just such a cool story and and really parallels uh to what Steve and I are doing with the podcast, uh, at least on some level. So we had a ton of fun talking to these guys. Uh, We had a bunch of good dad hacks, some really great proud dad moments, and we even talked tidy whities. uh, So that was interesting. Uh, Check it out. Let us know what you think. Make sure you check out Penelope Bourbon. Uh, They're on all the socials and at PenelopeBourbon.com. And uh, have a great weekend. Love you guys. In a world where moms continue to dominate parenting authority and a father's role is minimized in society, two dads take on the toughest parenting topics on a weekly basis, all while drinking bourbon. They are the Talking Dads. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us via Zoom. Uh, you guys are both in New Jersey, correct? Yeah. We are. Yeah, I'm down in uh, Monmouth County by the by the shore, and uh, Danny's up in uh, Central Jersey. Okay. Okay. And uh, so you guys, uh, sorry. So here's how we usually start our show: is we usually ask our guests to give us like a dad profile, like who they are, what makes them a dad, things like that, and then we typically get into uh, some stuff from there. Yeah. So. Um, why don't you do that? And in the meantime, actually, you tell us first what we should open first, because we kind of want to taste with you while, you while you're going, and then you can tell us who you are. <laughs> well, so, um, and Danny, if you want to, I'll, I'll give them what I think the flight should be. Okay. And Danny, I'll turn it over. You can go first on the dad front, since we're both yeah, dads. Um, from a tasting perspective, I think what we always normally do is we like to start out with our Penelope bourbon, the gold pea. Start there, 
And then I would uh, recommend then migrating, you know, up to the rosé cast finish. And then um, finish it off with the nightcap on the barrel strength. All right. It. That was my that was my uh, my thought, but I'm glad that we uh, aligned <laughs> with that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what what do they used to call it in college? Like the, the drinking game is like around the horn. And then uh, yeah. you take another thing, then you go again on the barrel strength, rosé eighty, <laughs> and then again. Yeah, around, around, yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's like around the horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. I love uh, it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna get a pour of the uh, Penelope bourbon, and uh, Danny, if you want to give us a dad profile, who you are, what you do, what makes you a dad, and then we'll get this thing started. Uh, I'm Danny Felici. I live in New Jersey, and uh, I love bourbon. And what makes me a dad? I probably shouldn't say this. This is weird, but um, <laughs> don't worry. We've had some answers like we've this heard it all. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but when I had my first kid, I started wearing tidy whities. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it happens right away. <laughs> you can't say this was editable, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. But that's not getting taken <laughs> out. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the title of the episode right there. Yeah. I'm just going to put that. I will just, follow that one. I just flowed in that direction, I guess. <laughs> Hey, I understand. You you start doing things like uh, buying New Balances and uh, yes, <laughs> you know, dad joke and everything. So oh, I yeah. like it. Danny, jeez, <laughs> oh, man, I'll just I'm and I'm Mike Palladini. I'm uh, another founder of Penelope Bourbon, and Penelope's my two year old. Um, she's the the little nugget, and I you know I, I don't I didn't migrate to tidy whities after Penelope was born. Um, <laughs> But my dad profile is like, I wear the same pair of Sauconies. I've been wearing them for like 10 straight years. Love rocking sweat, loose clothing. I'm yeah, a okay. loose clothing yeah. type yeah. of guy. Sauconies, sweats, and uh, you know, these Penelope shirts. I love them. Oh yeah, for sure. So, uh, okay, that's so, awesome. So, okay, so. <laughs> I just couldn't follow it up on a tidy wedding. Oh right? yeah, it's, it's hard to follow <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, it's hard to follow up. Rough. So, awesome. so Michael, you and, and Danny both, uh, had kids around the same time then, right? Yeah. It was eight months apart, more yeah, or less. Eight months. Wow. That's so weird. It's it's funny because so Ian and I are the same exact thing. So uh Ian and his wife uh found out they were pregnant and then uh so our kids are about seven, eight months apart as well. Our first kids are about eight months apart. So <laughs> It's exactly so, the same story. So for us, the kids came and then we were like, hey, we need to figure out a way that we can still hang out and drink together. So we started a podcast. Or we could yeah. drink together. Did Penelope or Penelope Bourbon come first? Well, that's a good question. Uh, really, you know, my wife and I, we were just, I'm sure, you know, uh, we all have friends that kind of went, maybe went through this, but, you know, we were trying to have kids forever. Like no one gave us the memo sure. having children after 35 is a little tricky. And, um, you know, we, we were, you know, it was kind of a big stress and just a lot of things going on. And I, we always knew if we had a girl, we were going to name her Penelope. And, you know, Danny and I were next door neighbors growing up, best friends. And we always, uh, you know, we always loved drinking bourbon. And then when we found out, uh, Carrie and I, we found out, my wife and I found out we were having a girl. We obviously knew it was going to be Penelope. And literally like a day later, I was like, Penelope bourbon. And I don't know, just <laughs> look, maybe it was my emotions running through me. Um, but the first thing I thought of, I was like, there's like no other, like, you know, it's a feminine name. I mean, in the yep. bourbon business, I was like, usually it's all about, you know, you said, you know, Velcro and dip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many hands is so, this horse worth for this bourbon? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it all and cat, like, it's all this. And so I, I just yeah. think it was, it, from that moment on, um, it was always about kind of whatever everyone's doing, let's think about it the opposite. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that works for us, you know, and I think yeah. so far, I like that a lot. So is is having a bourbon brand uh, something that you've always aspired to do or is it was it like a pipe dream and then you said, hey, wait, maybe I can actually do this. Like, I'm very interested in how that got started because. I tried making beer once and I sucked at it. <laughs> I tried bourbon too. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, yeah, we tried, the we little tried barrel. aging in one of those like little uh, two quart barrels or something like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it didn't turn out so great. Yeah, you guys, one of our five gallon. Danny, we'll have to, we'll have to get them one of our five oh, gallon yeah. barrels. You can yeah, that's great. Aging project. Oh, the yeah, nice. they're they're great. Great. good char on them. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, that's probably what it's all about is the good char and then maybe. Oak. It's got to be, be good oak. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, those little small ones are like they're gimmicky. So like you're getting, this, sure. I mean, you're getting them from like Etsy or something like that, and who knows what the quality is on that. Right. So. Oh, these we had custom made at our cooperage. These are like, oh, wow. like the real deal. Yeah, we get them to bars and restaurants. So, oh, okay. Uh, say we, you know, put let's do a, a barrel aged cocktail. Like maybe they'll do a barrel aged Black Manhattan, and they'll age Penelope with maybe some Amaro, um, and that's like their fall winter kind of showcase cocktail. Oh. Just you know, it's a little. This is all stuff we're, we're by the way learning. We were we're all learning this in real time too. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, for us, I mean, I never out until I, until that moment when we kind of like had that idea. And then I turned to Danny, I said, you know, this, what, this could be kind of interesting. Um, no, I mean, I think we both had our own kind of skill sets. Danny's a more detail oriented, mechanical engineer, very detail oriented, where I was uh, kind of more like, um, what's the phrase, Danny? Like, kind of like thought shower, blue sky thinking type thing, like. And, you know, I've had, you know, my brother and I started an online mattress business, um, which, you know, he still runs. Uh, I've worked in technology, you know, out in San Francisco at these various startups. And, you know, one thing I think from our side, from when, when just kind of going through my career was like, at the end of the day, that I've, I've worked in like every type, like I've worked in HR tech, like sales tech, you know, you work in all these different spaces and there's never really a concern, like, well, I don't know anything about HR. It's like, well, yeah. Cares. That's fair. Exactly. And that was kind of, I didn't, I just knew like when I, when we had the idea and I talked to Danny about it, I was like, we love bourbon. Like it's no brain. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to do something we loved. I mean, that's how it kind of really yeah. came to I, fruition. You know, you, yeah, you, you called her, I think we were actually somewhere and you were talking about the idea and then you already set up the trip to Kentucky to, or to MGP and uh, you were like, let's go. And then, I mean, after that trip, I was just completely in love with, like, in cl completely in love. Yeah. And, like, couldn't go back and, like, just wanted to figure out everything about this whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like, to, just, to, just to sit there and be like, all right, guys, you know what? Let's start making some bourbon. Like, I think we could figure yeah. this, this thing out. And uh, the fact that you guys did it, I mean, that would be amazing. Well, I mean, <laughs> for it's, it's funny. Like, I, I'm seeing all these parallels, right? Because, like, we, we said, hey, let's uh, – we should – we should have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or I think at first it was, we should make videos. Yeah. Was, you know, because of us being dads, we're always doing shit right. with the kids together because we hang out all the time. Our kids are around the same age. So we were always, we always have the kids together and we're always making all these, I mean, everything's funny with kids and we thought we can do something with this. We can make YouTube videos. People are doing right. it all the time. Why not do that? And then, and then that's like right around the time that podcasting really started being a thing. I mean, it was been a thing for a while, but, but it was, it's big. definitely more mainstream. And uh, yeah, I guess to like your guys' point, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We just started <laughs> learning and, and researching and talking to other people about it. And, you know, you buy one little piece of equipment and all of a sudden you're hooked. Yeah. I was going to say, next thing you know, you got a mixer board in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it's funny how that happened. Uh, I was in Vegas with my wife. We had like a little vacation and yeah. Ian, Ian texted me. He's like, hey, I think I'm going to get some equipment. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't know, I was like, midnight there so it's like what three o'clock here yeah ian's like i did a thing <laughs> he sends me the uh i was bored because we were podcasting i was <laughs> he like sends what am me i doing the picture of what he bought i'm like all right i guess we're doing this thing man we're going we're going big time here <laughs> yeah no i mean and it's funny too i mean the podcast but during COVID, i mean i should have gotten into the microphone business you know how hard these things are no. like is like liquid or not liquid but it's gold these things are right. it is gold very very it's a very um so you got in at a good time we, we yeah. had, we had this, this piece right here that uh, I don't even, I think it's called a stabilizer that yes, just keeps is. the mic in, in place. One of them broke oh, and God. we had to order a new one. And it was what, like four times of what we originally paid for them. And it took like six weeks to get here. I was and, driving around to like, yeah, we were going to all, like, all these the, stores to try to find something. And the, the pricing for these outrageous. things is ridiculous, stupid. But uh, we figured it out. But yeah, we, we, so <laughs> luckily we got most of our equipment before all this hit and uh, we've been able to use it and and honestly learn more about it as we go. And I'm sure that's kind of similar with what you guys are going through, uh, learning more about the business and then learning more about the process and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's kind of cool to see the, the parallels to this. Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool. It's a lot, we have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, Except even that. like today, because I, I mean, you know, my past career, I used like LinkedIn. Remember LinkedIn? Yeah. LinkedIn's big. I love LinkedIn. I'm never on LinkedIn anymore. Yeah. So when I, like even today I posted, a, I don't know, I just 
I posted a picture. It was one of the first times I posted something, and it was we had all this product arriving from Kentucky, and it happened to get, and it was like a lot of juice from our eighty, you know, our Penelope Bourbon, our eighty front. It all showed up at like five thirty in the morning, and I just like posted a picture of all the cases that were filing in the warehouse, and I was like, you know, I, find, I was like, I can't help not to feel like a bootlegger when all this <laughs> yeah. liquor is arriving at five thirty in the morning from Kentucky. <laughs> And it's funny because if you think about just two years ago, I was like in, doing something, you know, mattresses, whatever, you know, and all these people are like, wait, what are you, you're like, you're in the bourbon, <laughs> like, what the hell is going on here? And I'm like, I don't know. I, yeah, there's a lot of these people I'm not close, you know, these are more like, like professional connections or whatever they were. So right. I don't talk to yeah. them that often. It's, it's, it's funny. And it's cool too, because you guys are like, you guys are seem to be blowing up here. And like, I mean, I checked out your uh, website and everything. And uh, I mean, you guys have a lot of, uh, big magazines and like uh, websites that have, you know, put you guys up top, you know, ranked you pretty high. Like, I mean, like Yahoo and Forbes and um, Cosmopolitan, all these places. Like I'm seeing all these different articles that you, about you guys. And I'm like, this is, this is awesome. There's a couple of buddies who just started this bourbon business. And just a couple like, of years ago. Yeah. Just a couple of years ago. You guys are pretty new. And I mean, you guys seem to be, everybody I talk to that's had it, it's like, has nothing but good things to say about it. I mean, no, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> I was going to say when we when we first started, I think somebody in the industry just said it's like one of the biggest roller coaster of emotion industries. Like some days you feel like great, and then mm -hmm. some days you're like, "Holy shit, how are we going to sell all this bourbon?" You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like today, when your warehouse is completely full, I'm like, you gotta start unloading some of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are doing something right, like Steve said, on the marketing end and the the exposure end, the the branding end. Um, like I know how I found out somebody um, somebody shared a photo, like one of the bourbon groups that I'm in on mm. Facebook or something like, like that. Or something. And actually, I saw the rosé cask, and I was like, "Huh, that's pretty cool." I'm not really a big fan of. Um, the rum casks, but I've had a couple of the uh, like sherry casks that I'm really a big fan of. And I was like, huh, that might be pretty damn good. And that was probably like a year ago. And I never saw anything again, And but I wasn't really looking. And then uh, we got to talk to uh, Matt Evans from uh, Whiskey Consensus. My buddy. And uh, yeah, great dude. We've had dinner with him a couple times. And uh, he had posted a picture not that long ago and he's like, dude, you guys need to reach out because <laughs> they're making some really good stuff. And yeah. for him to like say that, I was like, okay, let's, let's look yeah. into this a little bit. Because, <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take it from you. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, so Ohio is a closed state. There's no, um, yeah, every, everything is, the contracts are all run through the state as I'm sure you're aware. So like we are at the mercy of what Ohio says that they're going to bring in. Um, and, and they change, they do a pretty good job of changing it around and, and, and giving us more options, but you know, this just hasn't been here yet. And so it was kind of one of those things I, I'm not a big fan uh, or, or like until COVID actually, you couldn't even get anything shipped here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. now they did change when they changed a bunch of the liquor laws when they started shutting bars and restaurants down. And, and one of them was, is that you could now ship here. Now, don't get me wrong. People were doing it. Yeah, it still but, happens. <laughs> uh, you know, just not as easily as, as it is now. So, yeah, we were excited to, to get our hands on some and give it a shot, which this oh, is awesome. Fantastic. This is amazing. By the way. Yeah. And I'll, so I'm going to give you the, the, the quick for, you know, the quick background on, on what we kind of Please. this etymology of some of these brands. So Penelope Bourbon, this was our flagship. This is what we started with. Now, keep in mind, I think we were talking about earlier, like we didn't like we didn't really know what we were doing, meaning like we have I think we knew like okay, we knew how to like maybe create a brand and execute, like do the kind of more tactical stuff. But we, I wasn't in, I wasn't knee deep in a lot of this bourbon stuff. I just like had my pores. I just enjoyed drinking it. That, mm -hmm. that was kind of really the extent of both Danny and I. I was not like really too deep into the weeds at all, actually. And so like even thinking about things on the proof side, as, as, as I mean, I shouldn't even say that, but it's true. Like I would, you know, I, I, I mean, cast rank was even almost a little even out of my league. Like now it's like when you're drinking it at nine in the morning on the bottling line. Like, <laughs> like, I got like PhD in cast strength. Um, but no, I think for us, I mean, we, uh, one of the things that we did say is, you know, we do want to, like, aside from our name, we wanted to differentiate ourselves. And so there's a lot of good bourbons out there. Um, yeah. So we wanted to look at, like, what was, like, what's, like, low-hanging, like, not low-hanging fruit, but what's something we could actually, like, target from a sales perspective. And I just kept looking at that basil hated. Mm -hmm. $50 ADP. And granted, you know, they got like George Washington on their name. It's Beam Centauri. They've been around forever. It's a great product. 
I was like, that's interesting because most of the 80 proofs are like the 1.75s, bottom right. row plastic bottles, and they're killer values. But that basil was kind of always on a separate pedestal, and there was no one really trying to at least try to snag like a point of their market share, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We were like, let's just you know go in, and we're going to be a four grain. So we blended three different bourbon mash bills from MGP. And this is this was just we didn't even kind of think of this at the time, but you know because each of those mash bills has malted barley, that was our fourth grain. Okay. So corn, rye, wheat, and malted barley, um, and MGP doesn't have a four grain, so that kind of spurred some interest. Oh. And we came out with for a craft supplier. I mean, we came out at a as, as a competitive as a price point that we can get. Um, you know, most, I, I don't know about online, but most, most retailers are under 35. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about right. I mean, I, and, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, for an 80 proof whiskey, um, and, and to be honest, I think I've only had a few four, like true four grains. One is, uh, oh, I want to say it was out in Denver somewhere, uh, laws maybe. AH laws. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And uh and I remember being very disappointed. Now, granted, my palate wasn't what it is now. So and I find <laughs> yeah. that to actually be very true. Like yeah, for sure. There's things that I had years ago that I was like, oh, how do you drink this? And now I'm like, damn. It's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that may have been part of it. But um no, this is this is this fantastic. Is really good. It's like my enough of that spice from the rye. And then I don't know if it's the barley or the wheat, probably the wheat that mm -hmm. the sweetness that gives it uh, that like uh, that wheater taste. I don't know that 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 it's a high wheat. It's fifteen percent. Oh yeah, it's on the final mash. So it's okay. it's you know seventy five corn, fifteen wheat. So it's coming sweet forward um, for sure. Whereas and and we kept thinking about going back to basil's, but like basil's has more of a rye forward. You know that spiciness. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so it was two different profiles, which I liked. What's that, Danny? So they have a lot of like oak on the back end, like on the finish, like you, you really taste the oak, which, you know. Yeah. But uh, like Mike was saying, like we kind of just stumbled on this four grain, you know, like when we were, when we were going through the mash bills at MGP and we were, you know, tasting them, we, we liked certain mash bills, but like nothing stood out on its own for us to, you know, think about putting into a bottle and, you know, he was headed one way, you know, he was like more on the right side. Like I, I really like their 99 corn. Like it's very good. And, and then we just started kind of mixing them together and blending them together. And, um, and we just came up with it and we looked at each other and we, you know, we both liked it and, I, and we were just like, wow, okay, this is something, right? Yeah. We came back to it the next day. Cause you know, we left after we left that day after drinking like, you know, sure. 80 samples. No one gave us the demo that you're supposed to like spit. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not getting the full feeling. Right. I just need to like drink it. <laughs> right, right. And then, yeah, when we came back to it, it was like, wow, this is, this is good. It's like a unique, it's a unique profile, you know, at 82 and it just felt right. Yeah. We, went with it. we haven't, we haven't changed, you know, we've tweaked our button, but you know, the mash bills are still the same and it's basically the same ratio. Hmm. I think you guys nailed like it. Like when you, so was this like your first shot, or or yeah, like how does that? Shot, work? Yeah. So like, curious. Here, here's the thing: is so <laughs> like no bullshit. Full first shot, we haven't really. The only time we change our blend percentage is if we have a like a low, depending on one of the mashes has a low yield. We, right. Then we're like, all right, we gotta kind of work with yeah, both guys here. Out the numbers, yeah. Numbers. But it's the same. I don't even know how we did it. I think wow. it was the, the that's luck. amazing. That's I, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> luck sometimes is is really because i mean all right so again we are we enjoy bourbon we enjoy whiskey but like i don't know the process of blending and 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 doing all that other kind of stuff and i don't we don't pretend to be like you know these whiskey connoisseurs uh we happen to really enjoy everybody that we've met in the industry which is i think fantastic absolutely and, yeah. um and i think the other thing too that i was actually thinking about this today uh pappy land just came out the mm -hmm. book Mm -hmm. and uh so Wright thompson and so i've been listening to it and the book it really doesn't have that much to do about pappy van like the bourbon or the whiskey itself mm -hmm. it's more about family and stuff like that and i kind of thought like that yeah. makes sense that we've been drawn to this bourbon industry so much because it's pretty much guys and they're you know with their families and 
that's when you drink is when you're drinking with other dads or other families yeah. or, or whatever. So I think it makes a lot of sense, but that's amazing that, you know, you, you buy a couple barrels <laughs> and you put them together and like, Oh shit, we found something yeah, amazing. We, we nailed it. <laughs> well, remember I was talking about like the highs and the lows. <laughs> yeah. So we left that day. That was a high. So we were like, Oh, we came up with the blend. Like no problem. You know, we, we, we got our barrels and we go to bottle it and we blend it and it didn't taste like our initial blend. Like it was uh -huh. like something like, was way off. Like there was a huge all that like a total botch. <laughs> <laughs> but um whatever what happened was like the line that we were on, like the lines weren't clean before, like we were with a new bottler. Um, you know, we don't we don't bottle there anymore, but you know, that, that was an issue that we didn't even see coming. And it was kind of like disheartening. You know, we were like on, on top of the mountain and then we were down in the valley, like right after that. Sure. And, I mean, we still have like 60 cases of that run. The first 60 cases were just not sellable. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's jalapeno. There was like jalapeno vodka they ran before. Oh, no. to, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hell yeah. It's funny. We, we do, we talk about this a lot. I think this is part of it. Cause like to you, you just, you said it earlier and you're like, we didn't, I, I mean, we blending is a, was a huge blind spot for us. Like, and, and this is part of why, like I remember, and I love, we love MGP. They're a great partner of ours. You know, they're trying to get us to buy like a hundred barrels out of the gate. Mm -hmm. You know, keep in mind, we were more, we never viewed this as like, we're quitting our jobs on day one and this is it. Right. And we were like, no, we got our jobs. We're doing our thing. Let's just, see how it goes right it's gonna take a year to get some of this paperwork anyway these permits from the federal and state so i was like let's go have some fun um we ended up buying six barrels on that first run so two of each blend them and then you got we can make penelope um and that's to one of the reasons why like i think it wasn't really till we got to like batch three of our 80 and batch two even batch three of our barrel strength where we got into a stride i mean even little things like um, that we're always continually improving on. Like, you know, even they noticed the cat. See, I noticed how it was real tight on the 80 proof. Yeah, yeah, off. yeah, definitely. All of our new bottles, they all have these new caps and, and we use them across the board. See, and now, so like, and it's the mahogany one you see on the barrel strength. So like there's things that we're continually improving upon. Um, and it's mostly that small, but the, really that first batch was. Uh, eye open. It was eye opening, and I think we knew we got a really like we. This isn't a joke. We got a really, you know, or else if we're not taking this really seriously and looking at every angle, you know, we're just just wasting money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if I could figure out which batch this was. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the other thing. In the early get go, we didn't really have a strategy around. Do we do batch? Do we not? It, and right. Just, right. It's it's all over the map. Um, sure. did, where does it? Where was it bottled? It's crazy how you like figure stuff out as you go, right? Things that you would have never. Yeah. Well, at that point, we realized that we have to be extremely, extremely hands on. Also, with... Bardstown. Yeah, that's. I know exactly. Uh, Dan, it's the 80 uh, from Strong Spirits. Oh, I, I like that. Thing. That's a really good one. I it's like that. It's, it's very tasty. really good. <laughs> I, I... I, 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 I chugged my poor. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm still holding so, a little bit. So that's the other thing about the 80 is like sometimes people buy it and then they, you know, like they come in or see them again another time. Like I finished me and my buddy, we kicked that bottle in one night. Like you just, you just fly through it. Yeah, I mean, I can see that happening just by that one pour that I had. I mean, I, it, it tastes phenomenal. Uh, it's so smooth. It's kind of dangerous. Like you said, you could go through a bottle of this with a friend in no time at all. <laughs> One of the things, even Matt Evans, Matt Evans, we talk about this a lot. And I agree because this is, I hear this quite a bit. It is just a great, like if you're going to a house party, it's one that like, if you're big into bourbon, it's, it's, it's going to be, they're going to like it. It's not yeah. like it's going to be a yep. turn. But most importantly, most folks aren't, most folks aren't super big into bourbon. Right. Yeah. Most, right. Like, you know, think about like most, the majority of people. And that's like one where they're like, people are like, oh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it, you know, if they use words like, oh, it's really smooth. And that's something that we've usually seen. It's just like kind of a happy medium with between. Yeah, yeah you're not going to make a face when you drink this. Like some people that don't drink whiskey no. or don't drink bourbon that are like, oh, I can't drink that. And I'm like, oh, you might be able to drink no, this. No, you can this drink this. Great. So, I mean, yeah, like, so, like I said, it's smooth, but it is complex at the same time. Because you're, you're, I mean, there's a 
hints of, I mean, there's a lot of sweetness to it, obviously, but with the four. It's got that good oak on the back, like I think Danny said that yeah. earlier. Um, but man, like, like it's, the flavor is phenomenal. So, so we do, we do uh, bourbon reviews, like as a joke. No, it's more satire than anything. I <laughs> yeah, mean, it's, it's and like we don't like, we're not trying to like make fun of any kind of whiskeys or anything like that, but we go and, and we try to not be pretentious assholes about it. And we're just like, well, this tastes like a really good bourbon. Like, I'm not going to say <laughs> yeah. that it's I mean, it got these notes because, I mean, we have we, a lot we, of fun with it and our palates have definitely improved over the last couple of years of doing this, but um, we, we have a lot of fun with those. Yeah, it's a blast. And I think I, one of the things I think to all, like we were, you know, for us, um, I think if we went back to MGP now and we were trying to think of a blend, it would have been a lot harder than when it was when we initially did our blend because we, there was this piece that we were a little bit, you know, having that like fresh Naivety, yeah. naiveness to yeah. your, you're like, ah, oh, this is great. Now we would like overcomplicate the shit out of it. Well, sure, we should yeah. be bringing in a seven year and doing this and thinking about it. And sometimes it's just like, Go with your guy. Just go with the flavor. Do you like the flavor? Great. Like sure. that's, and then you go from there. And I think that's been a good, we've kind of tried to stick to that. Oh yeah. You pop that with your thumb too. The, yeah, the that glass was, cap. Yeah. yeah that, that's that, nice. Like, that was awesome. That's a nice little touch. <laughs> little bite a lot. Oh man, that's, that comes out nice. Yeah. So we're going to move on to some rosé. So Danny, uh, so tell us about, you have a, you have a what, two-year-old then? uh actually 18 months he just 18 turned months? 18 months today you know you count like yeah birthdays right yeah, yeah we got a cake tonight oh the whole thing nice, <laughs> nice. Very that's cool. awesome yeah. that's a big one too because that's uh so so i'm in child care for a living uh my day job and so 18 months that's that trains you're not an infant anymore now you're now you're a toddler oh he's well, that's a boy now. Yeah. yeah he wants to do everything himself you know he's He's trying to get the words out. Like you can see him struggling. Like he like wants to say what he's thinking, but he can't. Mm -hmm. um, actually, my wife went away last weekend, and I I had him all weekend alone. And like it's been a while since like I spent that much time. Like just you know, when the mom's around, it's yeah, you know, like, a hundred percent. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a mom, you know, child thing. And but yeah. so it was really cool to spend a whole weekend just alone and kind of like have that little bonding we haven't done in a long time. Yeah, that's that's fun, man. Because I, I I remember the first time. So my first son, uh, Sam, he's four now. Um, the first time my wife went out of town, and I was alone with him, like for a weekend, and we had such a good time. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do something. It was the middle of the summer. I'm like, we're gonna go on these little adventures. Take him to the beach. You know, took, went everywhere. Took him everywhere. And it was just like that one on one time, and it was just completely different. Like you said, it was. I mean, it was just so much fun. Yeah, I mean, we had such a blast together. So, I mean, that one-on-one -on -one time is awesome. It's such a good time to, I mean, I don't yeah. know, just do your own thing without the influence yeah. of the wife. <laughs> I, I know that we, uh, we, we schedule time for one-on-one -on -one time so with good. both of our kids. Um, so my wife will say, hey, I'm, I'm taking Gibbsy. So my, son is, my son's name is Gibson. And uh, she'll be like, oh, I'm taking Gibbs out. To, uh, we're going to go to the park tomorrow. Like, she's like, you got someone. I'm like, all right, perfect. So then her and I will go do something and then we'll flip flop another day. And, you know, we do a lot of stuff together, of course, but it is nice getting that one-on-one -on -one time with your kids, especially once there's another one. Um, <laughs> you you kind of give yourself a break and then you realize how, how much you like, miss just one is one. <laughs> so much less complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what's, cool. what's your son's name? Cooper. Cooper. Cooper? Nice. I love it. Very cool. We so, we, we, both of us, we just have one so far. Yeah. So we're still in that yeah. honeymoon stage. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and well, they're around two years old. So it's like, I mean, figuring it all out still. I mean, it's like something new every day. It's something else flying at you. Just kind of learn and roll with the punches and learn as you go. It's like my favorite yeah, age, totally. I think, is that like getting into two to three years old, somewhere in there. You know, I, I think before you have kids, everyone hears the term terrible twos. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the, the twos aren't bad at all. The, two, the twos are great. It's the three. I'm telling you, man, it was like my kids, both of them, like once they hit three, Same. it was like on their birthday, yeah. like all hell broke loose. I'm like, what the hell is going on with, yeah, my, like with the, my little angel? The kids the are you're a born, demon all of a sudden. The day He's they're born, demon. you start wearing tidy whiteies, and the day they turn three, <laughs> they just turn into demons. <laughs> that always blows my mind, though, how like, 
you know, like one week they're one person and then the next week they're like this whole they're a totally different person. You're like, what the, what the fuck happened? Yeah. yeah. What right. just happened? Where, where, did, did, where did the old Cooper go? Now you're like a different person yelling. It's like screaming. he's got a gigantic molar busting through his gum. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, maybe that's why they're just absolutely miserable. Right. <laughs> just grab some of this Penelope bourbon here and just rub it on the molar there and we good to I go. I have done, you know, I don't know yeah. if I want to say that on the air, but yeah, you know, that, that does work. <laughs> sure, <laughs> absolutely. There's a reason why they say it, right? I mean, it is. it's funny. I mean, I think when you really step back and look at it, uh, you know, when they're 18 months old and you talk about a week, that's like one 70th or one 80th of their life versus a week for us has been like that's a you know just a snap of your fingers it's like it's flip. nothing yeah, yeah. And so for them yes they're going through these crazy changes and you know that's why the cliches of you know don't don't blink and and take everything in and and oh I mean, it, it's true it really is um mm -hmm. i think one of the things that we've done with this show is try to validate a lot of the cliches because it's forced us because we're hearing it so much because we're talking to a different dad every single week and, or sometimes two, you know, and uh, it's forcing us to really focus on all of those little things, which I think is amazing because it, it, it just reinforced or it, uh, it like brings drives home the point that like, you know, every week is going to be a new adventure. Every day is going to be a new adventure. And that's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And like, uh, yeah, like you said, like Cooper, he's uh 18 months right now and he's trying to form the words and he's it's it's the frustration too so that's the thing with like a two-year-old or around two years old it's them being so frustrated with not being able to communicate the way they want to and it's funny to watch them like they're they're i mean they're really trying to communicate and that's what the biggest frustration with them i mean i watch my kids try to say something to me sometimes and they're yeah. like just my son said it to me once before he's like i, I just I don't know the words. He's like, I can't figure out how to say it. I'm like, I know, buddy. It's okay. Don't get frustrated. You'll, you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that happens to me now. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> say, we're, have, we're in our 30s. And we're a couple, these problems. A couple, couple glasses, and I'm like, uh oh. I, What's that word? Uh, oh, remote control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stupid thing doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. My son, like in classic, like Jersey tone, like he talks with his hands. He yeah. like, he'll look at me and like babble something and be like, <laughs> <laughs> Dad, why don't you understand me? <laughs> That's awesome. Give me the pepperoni. <laughs> the gabagol. Gabagol. So, so we just cracked this rosé, oh. and uh, wow, this is different. I really, really like this. It, um, I don't. I, mean, so, I had a word that came to my head. So, see, I, it's a perfect example of not being able to find the word. No, I know, I know the word. <laughs> yeah, it's there. No, it's, if it's, it's the correct <laughs> word, and if it's going to be a compliment or not. I feel like it glides. Like Ooh, glides. I feel like it just like like smooth. I don't think is the right word. I think it glides down like straight from the the, mm -hmm. the palate to the finish, and it's got just enough of that like rose finish on it that I, this is really really good. Well, and I'm not a wine drinker. No, and ne neither neither one of us are. Well, maybe a little bit. You do a little red wine, but um, we. I love cast finishes. Like we actually are testing like PA. We got tons in the in our warehouse here in our facility here in Jersey. That we just have the 55 liter cast and we're always doing PX and cognac and double cast finishes. We're just tinkering. Sure. This one was really interesting. Um, we just didn't want the rose was meant to just be, we wanted it to be a great burp, first and foremost. I mean, that's that was what it was meant to be. Now the Grenache Rose was just supposed to be kind of that, give it just a little bit of a unique flavor profile, like just a little bit of a not like a butterscotch or vanilla sweetness that you get on a on, on a traditional bourbon, but I'm talking like strawberry shortcake. Yep. Yeah. You yep. missed that. And I'll be honest with you, that one's this is a really wild one. So you just crack that bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the, this thing will go on a roller coaster, meaning it could even be like if you really oxidate it, like give it a lot of air. I mean, this yeah. thing will start to really open up tremendously. And it gets it this is it does it. I mean, I don't see this on too many of our other bourbons, maybe barrel strength, um, yeah, barrel strength. a little bit, but did nothing like this one where that, that rosé really opens up. Um, it's almost know, like the wine comes out. Or, you know, even right. after a while, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what, like you said too, like in the, get it to oxygenate a little bit, maybe do a review on this. Like, yeah, cause we're trying it tonight. And I think like, so we do our bourbon reviews, maybe try it yeah, again soon and see what, See what differences we taste, yeah, or something like yeah, that for week. sure. Because I mean, 
already, I mean, like I said, it's, it's pretty complex. I mean, it's, it's, so I did the little 12 second thing. Oh, did you? Oh yeah. Did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> so somebody told us once, like you hold it on the front of your tongue and just let it sit there for like 12 seconds and then swallow it. And then like you get all the burn up front. And then when you, what, what are you hitting there? Okay, go ahead. Hit the button. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you let it sit there for a little while. Then like you get all the flavor on the back end and it's like, I mean, there's a lot here and it's, well, you yeah. said like kind of like that dessert, like it's kind of like a. Well, like I a, like that it's just very unique. It is um, unique. It's different. Know, we we've had the port casks finish, and you you know the PX and the you know sherry casks and all those other kind of things, and and they're all good in their own right, and they all have different flavor profiles, but nuances, yeah. You taste the rosé in this, and, and not like it. I don't think it's overpowering. No, not at but, all. And again, I'm not a wine drinker, but. I've had rosé before and I'm like, oh, okay, that's just different. And I, and again, I think that's that, um, like a deep red, I feel like you'll drink it and it's a lot up front and then it just kind of slowly finishes to whereas that rosé, especially when it's like cold or whatever, um, it just kind of glides. I don't know. I, 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 I like that glide that thing, gliding. man. Let's, yeah, do, let's well, do it. <laughs> so one of the things that's interesting is this, this is just like a fun experiment. So if you just take a small sip of it, it's a very smooth. Like you get that kind of forward notes and you're going to get the, a little bit of that rosé dryness with a little bit of that strawberry on the body and then it goes down. And it's, it is. It's a, I think the best way to phrase it is it goes down really smooth. And I think that Grenache kind of rounds it out and makes it kind of go down. Now, if you swish it around in your mouth, the flavors really just, and you'll see some of that alcohol. So it's 94 proof. Keep in mind, this is 14 points higher than our 80 proof. Mm. You're right with that swishing around, though. Mm. You get you that. See all that, you see all those yeah. flavors kind of dingle. Like they, there's a lot of activity. It's almost like they're like, it's like in a capsule, and then you just cracked it like uh, that gum that when you like, yeah. All of yeah. a sudden, you're like, oh, there's all this sparkling. So that's some. I mean, that's. I don't well, know how to explain that. It's really, really good too. Isn't I, that crazy? It, it's 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 a, it's, <laughs> it's really freaking good. Yeah. Well, that's what that's this is the one that Matt said. He was like, "Dude, yeah. I killed that bottle so quickly." Oh, <laughs> he said he finished it real fast. Tell me. I go, Matt. I go, dude. Let's do like an uh, Instagram live, just something yeah. like casual, like on a random night. And I'm like, let's do the rosé tasting, and and we have a new barrel strength that we're about to release. And um, he goes, "That sounds great." Uh, he's like, the only problem is I already killed the rosé. I'm like, <laughs> you know, keep in mind, he's got, and I knew he did because I see, I saw him posting a lot of it. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, he, and he, I, I, I've never seen his tone. Like he's, and he's always a great guy, but he drinks a lot of different bourbons, but mm. he was really bullish on this one. He, he really, um, yeah. really is. I, and I don't think it's bullshit either because I mean, we, 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 we sat with a couple him, weeks ago. Yeah. It was a few weeks ago. And he was like, man, I killed that bottle. It was, it was, the day it was before I reached out to you, Mike. I, it was yeah, like the day before we had dinner that night. And yeah. He just, he was raving about it. I was it, like, man. all right, dude, I get it. Like, I'll, I'll call him. <laughs> we'll get a hold of this guy. <laughs> hey, remember, you know, John Edwards said that too. Like he, you know, he was, he was big on it. And he, yeah. he's not a big, uh, super big wine cast finish. Sure. Right. right. We went to dinner with them. Um, we, were, we were excited. I mean, it was just a kind of a exciting project to even jump into. Like, like we were looking at all these different finishes just to kind of get closer to like our, our blend you know, see how it reacted with different things. And then just how this came together was just really exciting for us. And I mean, it was like such a process that once it was released and you saw it out there and you saw people actually liked it, it was just felt really good. Oh, absolutely. I, can't, I can't even imagine like that, like to feel nice. that, man, to, to see people's reactions to it. Like, I mean, we're being genuine right now. Like, sure. I mean, I have nothing. I mean, this is phenomenal, both of them, but I mean, this, this one's, this rosé is phenomenal. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of this one. Well, I, I, again, kind of to, to draw a parallel, I think a lot of times we'll put an episode out or, or we'll make a, we'll spend like a whole weekend making like a, a funny video or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're very much amateur editors and filmographers and whatever you want to call it, but we'll do all this work and then you put it out there and you, then you wait, like, you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> did this kill or people yeah. just be like, yeah, whatever, oh, dude, you know? I know, I know exactly. And, and like, but that is, you know, maybe a day or two of work. You guys, ha I mean, these are barrels that you're having to buy and then you have to let it sit. Right. And so this is years in the making of, all right, let's see what we got here. And I, I don't know that I can imagine that feeling of, of it hitting market and you're just like, Oh, Oh, please. <laughs> well, I think start to finish, it, you know, and it, it, start to finish it was probably about a year. Okay. So the 
idea actually came like I was sitting like here, maybe doing like a, a virtual tasting or something. It was probably back this time last year, like mid November. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. wife loves this rosé, and she's just like, oh, like, like why not do like a rosé cast finish? And now like the the novices that Danny and I are like, oh, that. And we're thinking too. Also, you guys all think about like we like to do things. If everyone's doing this, we want to do that. Yeah. Um, well, and it was like I've never heard of that before. I don't think there's another rosé cast finish out there, is there? I, I mean, we put it in our press release that we were, well, we had to put like the one of the first because we couldn't validate it. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I've the never seen registry, it. there's there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's a fantastic idea. It, it's not even something that I would necessarily think, like if I had that idea, I'd be like, does that really go together? Well, no. I think you guys. It doesn't. I think you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys nailed it. I'm telling like 98% of, you know, what what we were working with didn't work. And we just kept trying and it really comes down to the grapes used in the rosé and and kind of where it's from and and it took a it took a while to get there and just kind of you know running through we literally just bought like 80 rosés off the shelf at liquor stores like and then just mix them together just to like just to see what would happen and we finally found like what worked and then we told um we work with spaceside cooperage the barrel company mm -hmm. uh, we said, because they have, you know, they have connections all around the world for used barrels. And we said, we're looking for a French um, oak barrel, uh, a French rosé oak barrel, and specifically with made from a Grenache grape, 100% Grenache grape. And they're like, well, you know, most rosé is like fermented or, or aged in stainless steel. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. So, okay so not a lot of people are doing rosé in, in oak barrels and they're like okay and they're like so it's like a needle in a haystack we'll see what we can do and then they're like why do you want to mix rosé with bourbon because <laughs> <laughs> we do and then, but you know they're awesome and they've, they've been awesome along the way and they went out and, and it's specifically a guy his name's rob he's awesome he knows everything about um wine and barrels and wood and like worldwide he's and the he best came back Two weeks it's later, like came back two weeks later and said, "Hey guys, I found it. I found a winery in south of France. They 100% Grenache rosé, and they have barrels that they would give up." Man, so like, came on. that's so amazing. Dude. I go get, yeah. I said, "All right, let's bring them over." We they're they're basically at the port in south of France. And keep in mind, these are the, the wine casts aren't they're not. Sherry casts are a lot more expensive. PX casts are a lot more expensive. What you're paying for is really to put them on a boat and bring them here. Now, right. granted, the other thing that's nice is our facility is right next to the port of Newark. So it's- So it's a little bit cheaper, yeah. You yeah. save some money. A little, a little bit. So the, it's not really the price, but what was tricky was all of a sudden COVID hits. Yeah. So these things, and you know, we're looking, I mean, I didn't even know if we were gonna be in business at this time during like March. I'm like, right. I don't know what's going on. This is getting crazy. Like people are wearing masks everywhere. I'm like, this is nuts. Um, and this is like mid March when like people like masks, like what the hell's going on here? Um, we ended up, uh, shit. I, I mean, we ended up thinking about canceling the project. We were like, let's just do it in 2021 and let's just really be fiscally responsible. Let's watch cash flow. And we ended up, uh, the, you know, Rob was like, look, I don't know. I mean, these barrels, they might not be good next year and they're going to be here in a, they're going to be here in a little while, like meeting in a few months. So we said, all right, so let's, fill them up halfway. So we filled them up halfway and got a small run out of it. We were able to really feed out to, you know, get it to every single one of our distributors that we work with in every state. Um, and I mean, heck, it sold very quickly in every market. That's awesome. Um, online down to, to, to our distributors. So I think everyone was pretty happy. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here like in awe over this whole it's, thing. It's like, really I, cool. I mean, <laughs> but, so, so, I mean, we went from like, Hey, let's, let's do Penelope, which is, I think Mike, you said it's like feminine, you know, obviously a feminine name and like, that doesn't really make sense with bourbon and let's do rosé casks. And like, that doesn't make sense with bourbon and guess what? Like something's working here and that's really cool. Like, and I'm really was not intending to like, you know, inflate any egos or anything like that but i'm really enjoying your product <laughs> seriously man oh, thank you man yeah we have nothing but good things to say right now i mean this is phenomenal and i'm like i'm just amazed by your guys' story yeah it's a it's a cool story <laughs> it's such well, a cool thing like just I, the fact that everything worked out the way it did and you guys have a phenomenal product here it's just it's amazing 
So I was really excited. Quick story uh, about the rosé as well, because so uh, so again, I own child care centers, and I have uh, two people, these ladies that work for me that have been with me from the since the beginning, and they're amazing, right? And um, so the one, again, kind of to your point, like had some uh, finally got pregnant this year, and she was so excited, and, and it's been a couple years that they were trying and everything, and. Uh, she happens to really love two things when we're at office parties and things like that. And it's either whiskey or it's rosé. Okay. And so, uh, you know, she's, she's actually like, God, she's like eight months pregnant now. So, so she's, she's getting right close. There. And uh, she had said but to me- she's not on the whiskey or rosé right now. Not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But she had said to me a couple months ago, actually, uh, who was it? The Southern Tier came out with the uh, the pumpkin yeah. whiskey or whatever. Yeah, and she's pumpkin, like, yeah, I, I like pumpkin and I like whiskey. Like, you should, can you find me a bottle of that? I'm like, I'll see what I can do. And I didn't really look that hard. And then <laughs> I found this and I was like, all right. So actually today was her last day in the office and uh, I got her a bottle. I, I got an extra bottle of it. Ah, so, so nice of you. So she's, really nice. she saw it and she's like, oh my God, how did you find this? This is amazing. And I was like, well, I, I know, know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. It's all right. We're going to get, we're going to get you guys some stuff too after this. We want to for, you know, obviously this oh, is what we appreciate it. We want to send, we'll send you some of our fun experimental samples and oh, that'd be fun. stuff like that. Yeah. We definitely sure some of some shirts too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll send you guys some of these. Uh, Dude, those are cool by stuff. the way. We should do like, we should, maybe we'll like sponsor it. Suburban Dad. Sponsored by Penelope Bourbon. <laughs> I mean, hey, absolutely. We can throw a like, Kind of like a play there. on, like a play on the marketing gimmicks. Yeah. You know? That'd be fun. I love it. Um, yeah, that's very cool. So Mike, tell us a little bit about Penelope and like your daughter, not the bourbon. We've, we've yep. talked a lot about the bourbon and we'll continue to talk about it, especially oh, I'm born, I'm born the third one. Jeez, so nice. Dude, I can't that. stop, man. I'm like, this is like, <laughs> usually I'm the one that you have to tell I, me to slow down. <laughs> I, right. I mean, it's Thursday night. I mean, I know I have to work tomorrow, but yeah. you know what? <laughs> it's tomorrow's Friday, whatever. Right. I'll be fine. But you know, what's interesting daughter. is whiskey is actually very healthy for you. I know I don't this is I don't have any data to back this up. Yeah, I'll go with this. <laughs> I'll go with feel, it. I just feel good. Now if I drink cast strength, that's different, but if I'm drinking a sub hundred, mm -hmm. I mean I'm not talking drinking a ton of it. I'm talking maybe a oh, glass or two. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I it's like great. similar to wine. I think it's yeah. a, I can drink like um the, the 80 proof was like my wedding go-to. Like just <laughs> crank through that at weddings oh yeah <laughs> hell yeah man you have to <laughs> what's a what's a wedding i haven't been to that in a while I know, right man right? you know i actually God. had two this year did you oh yeah, you did i went to two was like earlier no this i mean this was like june and oh wasn't no it? i'm sorry i'm sorry august and uh september oh. well, or october so what's going thing? right yeah, well, in i thought you knew me <laughs> but i had bourbon the whole time i was there yeah i mean i mean they didn't really have much of a selection so i was like what was I, what was I drinking? I know the makers one you were drinking makers. Yeah, I drink yeah. a ton of makers. So they had last call at these weddings at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So right. like right before it's 10 o'clock, I'm like, all right, listen, I go up to the bartender. I'm like, hey, can can you fill me up here? I, this is the last call. She's like, yeah, no problem. So I have like, you know, your basic glass. glass. And she pours this thing to the brim. I'm like, all right. Big cannonball. I'm like, you're getting a good tip on this one. And I crush yeah. it. And I was feeling fine. And I think I will say about whiskey – and I'll say about bourbon is my hangovers aren't that bad. No, no, dude. I think that's what you, Ian was saying about the beer. It's brutal. The There's beer, no I, I'll tell you, I get a hangover the night of with beer. Yeah, right. Yeah, while I'm drinking it. Absolutely. <laughs> so we actually ran a calorie count. This is part of our early marketing strategy. We were like, hey, you know, what? we weren't sure what to do. Do we do like under 100 cal? So we ran the calories on the 80 proof, our traditional Penelope. It's under a hundred calories per serving size. So serving size is like a 1.5 ounce shot. Oh, which, okay. Yeah. Which is, which is actually, there's vodkas that are over a hundred. Right. Effective. So it's, uh, there's no sugar in it really. Now the higher the alcohol content. So barrel strength is going to have a, obviously a lot more sugar yeah, in it, yeah. right. which is why I gen, well, maybe that because it's 116, I usually feel a little groggy in the morning, a but bit. that's why if I have like three or, and I'm not saying I do, but if I had three or four of that 80, I'm going to, wake up yeah like, you'd be, right. be fine you split yeah it's actually not bad now if i mix it with like coca-cola i'm screwed oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're screwed. Right. absolutely it's that yeah. sugar yeah i i can't do that anymore i used i mean that was always my go-to about speaking of weddings i mean a couple years ago it was always like 
all right, bourbon and Coke, bourbon and Coke, because it would just kind of get you through and you're all yep. excited and you can oh, drink, slam them down. And then all of a sudden you, you, got feel, that, you like, feel obligated to drink faster. You, right, right. But the thing is, when you have some bourbon at a, at a wedding, it's like you can just sip on it. You can slow down. You can enjoy it. You look it. like a gentleman. You yeah. know, you're in your suit, yeah. your tie. Drinking it, bourbon. swirling it. Yeah, yeah, you can, well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no, this is obviously age. You went like this, go, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> decent. It's not what I would choose usually, but this is all they have, so. Yeah, yeah. Not my, not my first choice, but it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'll deal with it. <laughs> well, the, the 80, I, even, I, do, I do like um, club soda, the 80 proof and squeeze li uh, lemon in it and it's oh, like gets me through the night <laughs> yeah i mean so like club like soda man that's like my like i drink i'm a Lacroix drinker like i drink you know soda water all the time that's what i drink um but for the longest time before bourbon i was drinking tito's soda and lime that was like my go-to everywhere i went but the problem was that was like water and i would chug it down in like two seconds <laughs> With bourbon, know, i may, I have, new, I may have a new drink for you right here all right. And now, here. a lot of my friends, not bourbon drinkers, they, you know, it was Tito's Club. I mean, that was it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends, and I, you know, maybe started in the beginning of me pushing them, like, yeah, dude, figure out a cocktail. Like, come on, you know, throw me a bone here. I'm like, right. you know, right. let's think of something. Thing, like, a lot of my friends, and I've seen it like happen. So a lot of them migrate. Now, you've already kind of gotten into the bourbon side, so it's a little bit different. A lot of them do Penelope and Diet Ginger Beer. Ooh, oh, really? Yeah. All right. I mean, and I I, that. honestly, that's my, if I'm going to make a mixed drink, that's what I always make. Really? Okay. I never tried that. I, mean, I bet my wife would love that. Excellent. She loves like uh, mules and stuff like that. That's, yeah. That's like ginger beer. So yeah. Hmm. It, it I mean, really it, I'm saying like diet ginger. because I'm thinking like it actually, you know, why have the, you know, it's, it's just as good, you know, I mean, yeah. it's regular ginger beer, but all now I'm seeing a lot of my, like, uh, these are friends of mine in town and. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying because I know them, and they're like, "Ah, oh, dude, I'm, like, I'm getting two bottles a week of this Penelope because I'm just cranking through this stuff." Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it is, I'll be honest, it is a really good. It's a good, just easy sipping mixed drink. Nice. Okay, that's. I might have to try that. Sounds amazing. You know, we we always say, uh, uh, you know, we're we're pretty fortunate over here. We're good buddies with a guy that owns a bar across the street from our studio here. Uh, has an amazing whiskey bar and and, oh, and, awesome. and really good food. So we get to go in there and, and he gets like all the unicorns, right? And so you, if you wanted to go in there stuff, and get yeah. some, yeah, you know, whatever it is, this year's release of something, you know, EH barrel proof, whatever he's got it. And he's got a couple bottles to spare. So That's he'll, awesome. he'll pour us whatever and M twenties and, and oh, things God, like that. You he's, know? he's, he's awesome for that. Um, but like, so I've gotten use out of laziness of just drinking everything neat. Yeah. And then there's other people that, you know, want to put a cube or some some water in it. And and I think that we've always paralleled whiskey drinking to parenting. Cause because that's what we have to learn how to do <laughs> if we're gonna do a parenting podcast and and focus on whiskey, is is we say like whatever works, right? And so from a parenting perspective, if you're going to co-sleep or you're going to throw them in their room at three weeks old and, and, you know, never look back, whatever, whatever works for you and makes you guys happy and you're comfortable with, do it. If it gets you an extra hour of sleep, do it. Yeah. And by the same token, if you want to drink your whiskey neat, drink it neat. If you want to add some club soda or some ginger beer or, you know, again, going back to that uh, Pappy Land book, I found out that uh, Julian Van Winkle drank his whiskey on the rocks, like several rocks with an, uh, a lemon twist every time. Really? Yeah. And like, that's freaking Van yeah. Winkle, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, that's the like, guy. So a lot of people think like, oh, how dare you, you know, put anything in your whiskey. And, like, you know, oh, shit, this stuff's too strong. <laughs> cool, that whole yeah. I'll be honest, you're spot on. Do whatever makes whatever, you whatever, happy, yeah, right? Yeah, whatever you <laughs> like, then go with it. I think, I think I we've become an, accustomed to neat everything. We have. And, and again, I, for me, I think it's out of laziness because I don't want to get up and go yeah, get more go, ice. And get, the, I get, the ice get the ice. Get the cute. Uh, the I bought, a, sphere I bought and, a dropper one time for distilled water, and I lost it. So I, was like, <laughs> I, don't even, I think I used it once, and then I like went we'll, to go we'll clean it. We'll put it in the bag. For, we'll put a, uh, <laughs> it, I love this word, too. It's, my, it's like a buzzword of mine a couple months ago. Pipette. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, 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 pipette. Yeah, nice, nice. Great work, great industry work. Pipette. It is good work. Absolutely, I like it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, I think that's kind of how we approach parenting, and and you know, a lot of what we do is we try and connect with guys that just found out that they're going to be a dad, 
and they're freaking out like how expensive are diapers and and how expensive is college and i was like look dude from diapers to college you got a lot more shit that you got to figure <laughs> out right yeah, yeah. um and we try and like calm guys down and be like look listen there's no parenting book there's no podcast there's no video that you can watch that can tell you every single step along the way yeah like we'll sit here and tell you what works for us yeah and our guests will tell us what works for them I mean, whatever right. works for you is the best way to go. I mean, because right. I mean, like you said, there's no parenting book. There's nothing that's going to tell you exactly what's going to go on with your kid. Right, every kid is different. different and every parent's different. So I'm and, sorry, I cut you off. No, no. I mean, that's exactly it though. And then, and, and I think again, kind of, par I like to parallel. Um, I'm all about parallel. Like, that's what I love about whiskey and bourbon too, is there's no wrong way. There's no right way. And, you know, I could just as easily drink this for, you know, one or two drinks and then go to a barrel proof and be very, very happy. And then I can go and make a Manhattan and be very happy. And, you know. I love it. and barrel strength. I love oh, yeah. Manhattan with that barrel strength. It's oh, oh man, it's really good. This barrel strength is phenomenal, by the way. You know, it's funny too, like with, even with Penelope, like, and it's funny, I use the word Penelope all the time in our households. I like, imagine. Well, yeah. I mean, hey, oh. my, I, even people call, hey, it's Mike from Penelope. <laughs> and then you got Penelope, like, it's just, it's almost like I'm in the twilight. You're going to have a hard time with that, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Penelope at your house. <laughs> going to have to change the name or something. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Especially now that she's getting older and she knows her name. Yeah. It's like real crazy. That's going to be really cool for her, you know, when she gets older and she starts figuring out what's going on. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's like, that. the, that's like the <laughs> ultimate ode to your daughter. Like, you know, oh, yeah. for sure, man. I got a niece named Penelope. I, I love the name. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. I'll be I'll honest. Be... I never. I didn't. I'm not like I didn't do this to like if I could try to find a way to put her into college. I'll be and I love her to death. She's my daughter. She like means everything. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a. It was more just the. It was like I just felt like I. It was there was no narrative. It was like mixed emotions of not, like trying to have kids for like four years and all of a sudden you're like, I'm doing it. I love bourbon. Penelope, great name. Let's go. Yeah. Like I never really thought much about it. And it still hasn't even sunk in because we're just moving a thousand miles an hour. It's there was, I don't think there was ever other. I don't think there was ever another name though. I mean, when you told me, I, I mean, it didn't seem like it. Yeah. It well, I mean, it's really the same exact thing as if you were to go to MGP again, right? Like you could overcomplicate things because now you have a vision and you've been in it for a little while and you understand the process and you're like, okay, if I was to name this, what would I name it? Yeah. You know, oh, and, God, and the yeah. reality is, is if you just start and you, you, you figure out what's right and it, it just kind of works itself out. I'm going to call it Wyatt Earp, you know, like something like real West. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. something Family. I only thought and, and, right. and I, they, no, I, I, Penelope I works. I Although like Wyatt Earp does sound badass. Maybe we'll do like does, a little like, side <laughs> <laughs> Or like Doc Holliday. Yeah. Doc Holliday. Yeah. Two, I love that Tombstone. movie. Tombstone, yeah. Oh. yeah right. It's a great, great No, but movie. I love the Penelope idea, though. Like you said, there's nothing else really out there that has that name. Like, like something like a, a, a girl's name. Yeah. I mean, everything, like you said, like it's all Western or it's like manly. Biting off the end of a cigar. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I need Widow, to Widow Jane, but that has like a negative word in the beginning it does yeah, yeah you have a widow in front of, of it and you're like yeah. i always think of a black widow when i when i have widow Jane. Oh, this is like, sad oh. like woman in like a black dress yeah, just like right, this old right. fashioned like western black dress just so depressed right. and just hates everybody and never thought about that <laughs> it is like it's like putting it yeah they got good bourbon though they, it's they do good, they yeah. really do i love it man yeah. very but, cool <clears throat> the, um, yeah i think a lot of it too is um the uh, one of the things I do think Danny and I talk about this a lot was our, our story is super simple. My grandfather didn't have my grandfather's like our grandfathers are like right off the boat from Italy. Like uh, both of our names are on Ellis Island. My cool. neither one of our grandfathers had a friggin bourbon recipe. That's all I do know. Uh, right. Yeah. And I think it's just like, ah, dude, it's it's like we're friends from high school. It's named after my daughter. That's it. Like and then all of a sudden it's like it's quiet. <laughs> yeah. like, what's next <laughs> yeah yeah right you know what the simple is good i mean look and we put mgp we're so, i mean i didn't we didn't know this at the time it was just part of what we thought was normal it's like of course we're going to tell people about our supply chain so, get sure. our so we partnered with castle and key in frankfurt and then we got a warehouse yeah and it's it's a tiny little warehouse and i think just just being open honest transparent being good people yeah. and having a 
I Again, going that. against the grain. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. Being transparent with the whole thing. Family is... run business. Like we're all family, you know. And right. Maybe to Even your... our warehouse, my stepdad used to, it was, it's in his family, and we rent from him. <laughs> yeah, he's cutting us a sick deal on it too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what that's what it's all about. Really great deal. Can't piss off his stepfather. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Stepfather slash landlord. Yeah, of course. Don't piss him off. <laughs> no, no. But we are. That's where our blending and bottling line is going to go. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so, we are going to start doing small batch blending and bottling. Oh, that's very cool. So I, what is the future of Penelope Bourbon like? And, and maybe you don't know, and it sounds like you guys kind of, which I really love, make a decision, roll with it, see what happens. Um, but, like, are you guys ever interested in, in like, own make stuff? Or are you going to actually distill or, or keep your relationship and, and keep it going? Because – that's working. You know, I, I, I don't know what, like how that, what, what's that thought process like? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think we know our ethos is like, we are not distillers. We don't want to be distillers. Um, I think there's, there's great distillers out there. Mm -hmm. um, contract bottling, whether it's whiskey, vodka, gin, it's a contract. Distilling is a massive industry in the U S sure. um, and it's been around forever. And I think they have it in place because these these places, if you start to get really big, um, you know, I don't think Tito's is making all that vodka from their right. you know, place yeah. in Austin. I know that for, you know, they're, they got, there's a lot of capacity they need to fill. So we, we are, we love blending and bottling. We love, oh. now we're like kind of getting more, we're meeting more people. We love finding great barrels of bourbon. Um, we, we want to, you know, for us, it was partly because of the money. We didn't like, we couldn't go out and buy, like, we don't have, massive we don't have like 10 year barrels just hanging out I mean, right, yeah like, right rainbow with like uh you know lucky charm well but that's the hard part about this that yeah. industry is like i don't know how you get into it other than buying yeah. buying some mgp or, or or there's a few others i guess that that uh yeah. mass produce and then putting your own spin on it i don't know how else you could get into it unless you have you know a family member that yeah. you know inherited a, a Stitzel Weller, or, you know, grandfather had a bourbon <laughs> recipe. Right. I mean, that's the only way to do it. Right? I mean, that's what's so cool about this whole thing, too, man. It's yeah. like, like you two. I mean, what you guys have done, like your wives and everything, like this is such an amazing thing. Like it makes me feel like we could make a bourbon. We probably could <laughs> if we really wanted to. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll be honest, with you, I mean, it, it's been an amazing experience. Yeah. For both really of us. Um, it has. I think one of the things too that people don't underestimate tonight is you have to. You know, Danny and I, we, we've been friends for a while, but like you go into business with someone, it's very different. Like, I don't care if you yeah. backed up to me right. my whole life. Like this yeah. is like <laughs> really different. different for sure. So <clears throat> one of the things you see a lot of these companies, a lot of they, they fail all the time is because the, the founders don't get along and there's not, it's just a shit show. I, you know, and I think it takes time when you don't, I mean, I've never worked with him per se. We we're always on like, we have our high school group chats and stuff like that. And you were yeah. always hanging out. But when you're like, in the thick of it like that's when you're like oh my mike's a psycho or like danny's a, <laughs> danny doesn't follow up on email like there's like all this shit and it took it did take like you know if you can get through that first six months of like yeah dude you, like do you not do you not check email <laughs> like that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff yeah, <laughs> like, you gotta be like you gotta yeah. find you figure out like the deep inner workings of this person you know yes mm -hmm. for sure it's marriage it's literally marriage Absolutely. We, yeah, I mean, between we, the two of us. We like kind of had a similar thing. I was like, say, yeah. We were like seven, eight months in, something like that. Yeah. And we just kind of were doing whatever it was, right? We were going to add a little bit here. We were going to do another segment. You know, yeah. who's going to reach out to these potential guests, whatever it was. Like we had little things that we would do and we would just say, hey, I'll, all right, I, I took care of this or I took care of this. Yeah. And like we did get to a point where like, we're going to continue doing this. Yeah, like, like, we're having fun, but it's very unorganized. Yeah. And we did. We came here one night and for like four hours and we sat there and drank half a bottle of, <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but we made like a work schedule and we're like, all right, like You're gonna this do is, this? we are partners in this. So let's figure out how to run it as a business. And, and now that we're organized, it's amazing. Like we, he knows what his jobs are. I know what my jobs are and, and, we yeah. do it. and it just works works yeah knowing knowing the roles and like you know everybody has strengths and strengths and weaknesses right you know mm -hmm. like 
you have to play to everybody's strengths and and uh, kind of work that one. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, like I, I think about it all the time. Like, well, um, I think about this all the time. Like, hey, Ian could probably pick up somebody else and do this whole podcast with somebody else. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe not. Cause like no. who else is going to be able to do this with them? Right. You know, like, uh, it, it, it just works. Like, uh, like for you guys, you guys were uh, friends growing up. Ian and I have known each other since we were like four years old. You know, we went to school together. Uh, and here we are today. We're in our mid thirties and yep. we're doing shit like this together. And like, like Ian said, this is kind of like what we call a dad hack. If you want, <laughs> if you want to figure out a yeah. way to hang out with your best, like one of your what best you friends, like that? Yeah. Yeah. Do something yeah. like this. You start and something. Right? Start something like you this. Have to partner on novelty T-shirts together. I mean, hey, you guys yeah. have some good right? yeah. I like that dad hack. We yeah. Sure. So it is true. Yeah. You need this. It's healthy. We need this. It's good for us. It really is. Absolutely. It really is. And, and like, <laughs> sounds so selfish. My wife, I gotta say that quietly. <laughs> yeah. Right. No. You know what though? That's like, funny. Bitch. We joke. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we joke about that, but like, our wives also know how important it is to us. And like they'll joke, and it's like, yeah, but when's it gonna make us any money? And I'm like, it's coming. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, don't you worry. <laughs> but because that's never really been our goal, but they do genuinely, I think, yeah. realize how important it is that we get together and we we're creating something, and then more importantly, we get to talk with other guys and we figure out because we do we talk about fatherhood stuff, right? And I think that I'm a better dad because of it. Absolutely. Um, it definitely resets me once a week and I'm like For sure. It makes you uh, make oh, really I'm sorry, Ian. I thought you were saying and I'm a better dad like than Steve. <laughs> 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 No, that's son of a bitch. Yeah, like, like <laughs> look, I'm not here to judge, guys. Yeah, <laughs> you're seeing the true colors here. No, that's definitely not no, the no. Case. But it's true though. Like this whole podcast, man. Like when we get together and we sit down with different dads every week. We could, like Ian said, reset yeah. and uh, see the big picture and everything. And it's it's almost like therapy. Yeah. So it, it does help to make you a better father, or just person, or a right? person in general, you know, or like, husband, what have you. I feel like. It, I feel like, a, uh, especially because, you know, typically we do uh, our episodes on the weekends, right? Um, just makes sense. We usually do Friday or Saturday nights. And it's just like you get through that whole week of stuff. And, we'll just you say know, hell. Yeah. <laughs> it's like work is whatever. And then I got, you know, I got gymnastics one night and I got swimming another night and I got basketball another night. And it's just like it never stops, right? And, and look, I love doing all the things individually. But then at the end of the night, you're like, oh, my God, I am so freaking tired, yeah. right? And, and everyone is. Like, I'm not – that's not a unique issue to have as a, <laughs> as a parent. We're all tired. Um, yeah. But then, like, especially when we do Friday night episodes, there's a lot of times on Friday afternoons, I'm like, are you kidding me? I got to go sit there and talk to someone that I haven't – never met before. Yeah. And then – tough. By it the is, time man. we're done with it, though, I'm so – like Saturday morning, I get up and I'm like super dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, amazing. It's, it's, I just feel better about it's it. It's really true, man. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I never met this guy. <laughs> I just want to watch Dateline tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I have to show I just on want Netflix. I my tidy whities and watch yeah, Dateline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, what a move. I can't believe you're a Teddy Whitey. Like, once, it's in, I, once I think something, I can't like not. Yeah. Well, we got you now. Hey, you know so. what, man? You're good. We love it, dude. We're getting. This is like the first thing I thought of. Suburban dad, tidy whiteies. I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you a pair, Danny. <laughs> oh, oh man. Shirt we... still are on point. Is the is is a uh, is the in shirt? Is that like a oh brand new shirt? Or... Uh, so this is another one of our shirts, and that's nice. I like that. Yeah. Just... Yeah. I like. It that. has a suburban oh, dad yeah. on the back. Yeah. So, nice. so we like to, on our website, we have them for sale and we like to just come up with very like witty and ridiculous descriptions and things like that. And so that's really what it's more about. And we sell a few of them and it's fun. Um, but you know, like that one sells kind of like crazy actually. Um, I like, that's cool. I'm, I'm going to get that one. I like that. Out at, uh, you know, like going through the airport or something like that. I'm like, Hey, that's a really cool shirt. Where'd you get? And I'm like, well, well you happen to know where I know a guy and I got it. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just one I'm of those have things. A box. Yeah, right. We it was just like a. Uh, at first, we bought a bunch to or, or came up with it and then made a bunch of shirts just to kind of promote the podcast, right? And then they started selling, and and that was fun too. And um, I don't know, like I certainly don't think that we're going to be t-shirt makers in the future. No, but we do it. It could be fun, fun like the chive it. or something like that. Right. <laughs> it's cool, like 
getting an order from someone you never heard of. And you're like, this isn't one of our friends. Oh, cool. yeah, cool. It really is. We got man. one today, actually. And we're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Ian texts me. He's like, dude, look at this. I'm like, holy shit. I don't even know who that person is. Yeah. And I'm like going on Facebook. I'm creeping on. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, well, they're not friends with any of our friends. So I don't know who the hell this person is. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. yeah it's fun. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, it's all, I mean, I, that's why I love it. We, we don't, we have our stuff and we get some stuff. We actually get a lot of people that have like kids named Penelope or their yeah. daughters wife's Penelope we get a ton. I mean I'm talking like that makes sense. I got people from New Zealand being like how do I get a bottle like yeah. and this guy's like my wife's named Penelope I have to get her this like yeah. right that makes like, sense I don't know dude I'm not I feel like I need to get my brother like, one like because my my brother uh my older brother's daughter my niece is her name is Penelope oh. and uh so same thing like they he's a couple years older than me and they had a lot of issues and um you know Penelope was like their their savior like she was like their miracle baby like yeah you know, so Penelope is that means a lot to him so I'm like I'm thinking I need to get him a bottle of this you absolutely <laughs> should and I don't even know which one to buy man these are all so good I have to say what oh yeah I, I know. think this is my favorite <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you I, I love that one. oh we uh yeah and I got I've, I've actually got a lot of nice emails from people with similar stories um all over the country yeah like, that have the uh, just you know like Penelope, like, you know, then I, and I always, I, I told, remember, Danny, I was telling you this last night, I, I literally write back to every, and it's not like a ton, I'm not like, it's not, yeah, like, yeah. but I mean, we get a bunch every, every week, like, I mean, it's yeah. probably five, six, seven emails yeah. like, to our info, and, and we always get back to everybody, yeah. and I, some of the stories are really just, they're just nice, like, it's just yeah. nice to hear from people, and. Isn't that amazing, too? It's real, it's you know? That's more validation than a sale or anything else, at least yeah. to us. I mean, we've gotten a couple, like, DMs or, or whatever. It's like, hey, you know, somebody turned me on to you guys, and I didn't know anything, and I had no, no want to be a dad. Like, it wasn't furthest thing from my mind, and my kid was just born yesterday, and I've been, I've been re listening to your stuff for the last six months, and I feel like I'm actually prepared. And I was like, yeah, that, dude. That, like, to hear something like, like that, it's like, hey, seriously. I'm like, holy shit, maybe we're doing something okay. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you guys need a master class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> the suburban you dad. Like us and like Neil class. deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> 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 Upcoming awesome. next. Yeah, that'd be perfect. <laughs> see, see, you guys officially have more of the rose cast finish than I do. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. All right. I Look at this. I feel pretty, this I feel pretty so special. Good. It is I mean, so that, good. They're all very, very good. I'm excited have, for this. So when's it going to come to Ohio? That's the question. You said Ohio's a pain in the ass. I know that. Oh, we, did just, we just got into Pennsylvania. Okay. okay. Making your way. You're close. close. And I mean, close. Right there. control states, it's all about, uh, well, we're doing, it's funny, we're doing a big tasting down in North Carolina with like this big, big North Carolina whiskey group. And they reach out to us. And we always, we love these virtual tastings. We do tons yeah. of them with big whiskey groups. Uh, maybe that's something we can do in Ohio too. And what, how they do it in North, in North Carolina, the guy told me. And he was like a total character, really nice guy. I'm actually really excited about this one in early December. Um, and they, uh, we, we, you know, we get the, we get a good crew and we'll provide samples. We, you know, we make it fun. We'll, we'll make it, we'll, we make sure we get some good attendance by doing what we need to do. Um, and once after the, the pot, the, the tasting's over, they flood the North Carolina system with requests. Oh, for, that's nice. oh, that's a good idea. And, but they do no, it like no. it's all strategic and they go, oh, we're going to get, if we want, like, he go, Mike, you come to this tasting, we're going to get Penelope bourbon in North Carolina. I go, let's roll, baby. All right, we man. could set something like that up with like the Cleveland bourbon co-op. Yes, for sure. You know? so, so and they just a, flood the, the, the state board. I mean, we got a, we actually got, I mean, we've had a few states. Uh, Wyoming is the control. They reached out to us. Yeah. Um, it's always, they only reach out to you if it's coming from. That makes sense. Board. Yeah, 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 that makes a lot of sense. So we we were part of a it's called the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, uh, and and it's a fairly substantial group. It's a couple thousand members. Do a uh, tasting. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we should we will absolutely do a tasting, and we we've done some podcast stuff with those guys, and uh, they do their own barrel picks all over the place, and they send guys out, and you know you have to do like lotteries to get them, and it, it's fun, you know. Um, but it's a really good group, and I I can reach out, and if we want to do a tasting, yeah, that'd be that'd a lot be a fun. phenomenal idea. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Well, and, and that would be all we would, I mean, seriously, we'll, you know, off the right, we, will, we can't say it like online, but we would provide samples. Like we'll, we'll, we'll like we make, we do it upright. I mean, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We talk, yeah, we talk about that for sure. Yeah. Um, 
but we uh north carolina this group like it's kind of known with supply like craft suppliers like if you want to get into north carolina you just you just go to that group go to that group and makes you know, sense that so makes it's, sense. It's, it's it's actually it makes sense i never thought of it really and i'm like right you talking to him was like nah, would, and they have similar similar things it's probably a couple thousand but Oh, it is like you get more than like three emails to the state, and they're like, "All right, all right, all right fine, fine, we'll do it. We're gonna we'll, do it." We'll talk to you. Like, what do I do with all these? Leave right. us alone. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the guy that runs Ohio, uh, the OHLQ, I think it's mm. called Ohio Liquor Board, whatever. Um, he's actually a really big bourbon fan, and so any products that are bourbon re- or even whiskey related, I'll say, uh, I think have a better shot. Like what? I guess when it comes to like craft distillers or craft, uh, what would you be called? A craft. We, we, I mean, we just all call ourselves craft suppliers. Craft suppliers. Um, okay. Technically you could say non-distiller producer. Yeah. Producer. I think producer is good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, since he's, he's known and he's done a really good job over the last several years that he's been in, in, in uh, in charge of getting really good whiskey into Ohio's market that was just never here before. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's, that could be something that we work out. It'd be a lot of fun. I'm in. <laughs> Ohio, let's do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be honest with you all, Pennsylvania and Ohio, like, so for we, can I keep working? Like when I look at our online guys, like it's like Flaviar and Caskers, like they're the right. same. But we, I, I know them, we know them. We work really close with them. Sealbox, we love them. Sealbox is great. Mashing great. Adi, really, we're very close with Adi. Sealbox was sold out. Yeah, Just I know. Time. Just yeah. time. <laughs> well, you know Blake. He Blake. Sure, he's got a great community. Yeah, he's yeah. really built a great community when he and drops an email. Up, so they bought it all. I get it. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, no. Nah, I mean, it just they they he goes quick. I mean, yeah. online it goes very quick. Not just us. I'm talking like everything right. in general. Online, the COVID has really transformed sure. online purchasing from the diehard to people that are just like, ah, oh, it's easier. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know what I, I mean? Agree. Yeah. That's fundamentally now still retail is still monumentally important. Yes. But there's been a little shift for sure. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we talked a little bit ago about kind of a dad hack and, and what that is. Uh, definitely, uh, Steve, this is more your segment, but, uh, I'm going to explain this one. You <laughs> Go can ahead. Do Absolutely. One. No, you're fine. Uh, so we like to get out of our guests, uh, a dad hack. So, I would like each of you to come up with something that so far, so Penelope is what, two, you said? And yeah, Cooper, Cooper is, is 18, 18, months, 18 months. So in the last two years, the both of you have come up with something that you never would have thought of that makes your life easier when it comes to parenting your kids. Um, and we really like bringing those kind of things out and, and, and trying to force guys to think about them because... Now, then you'll think about it more and you'll be like, oh, wait, this really does work. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I like to hear stuff that maybe makes my life easier too. I can give you one if you want, if you need time to think. Yeah, you, you, you go. <laughs> All right, so especially for you guys, so like a younger child, like a two-year-old or 18-month-old, uh, so like changing their diapers, right? You know how they're always kicking their legs and they're getting a little crazy. You're trying to change the diaper. Or no, I'm sorry, their, their clothes. So you put the diaper on. You want to put like, say, pajamas on. What I did was one of my dad hacks was when you're putting a pant leg on, slide the first one all the way up to the top of their, their thigh. Okay. So no, they can no longer kick that pant leg off. So that one's on there. And then you can slip the other one on after that. That's the dad hack that I used for my younger kids. So that's literally younger. how the dad hack segment was born because <laughs> huh. he had said something like that. I'm like, that's not even an issue. What are you talking about? And then, like, a day later, I was putting, like, pants on my daughter. And I, you know, just kind of, like, put, put one over the ankle and then went to go to the other one. She's kicking. And she's laughing about it. I'm like, what the fuck? Yep. And I was <laughs> like, wait a minute. Let me try this freaking dad hack. And I was like, holy shit, this works. Yeah. Uh, so that's how this, like, whole segment was born. Yeah. And it does work, by the way. It does work. Like a charm. So if you guys want to use that dad hack. I would do it. <laughs> Danny's probably, I know what Danny's thinking. Like, God, I, I, we're such bad parents. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, like my nanny and uh, <laughs> this dad hack is getting a nanny. No, no, no. no that's a, we don't have one. That's a dad hack right there. We don't have one. No, we're, I'm just <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. No. 
I actually just just gave me a new one. I have two dad hacks actually. Oh, okay. Okay. I only have, I have one. All right. <laughs> well, I have one that I just like realized like two weeks ago, and it's been like a total game changer. Um, and it's probably everybody probably knows about it, but guided access mode on an iPhone. Like. No, I don't know. There's oh, there's like a thing on the iPhone. It's called it's under accessibility under settings called guided access. And if you you hit your like little side button three times, and it freezes the screen so that like anybody touching it, it doesn't do anything. Stop it. So like when I'm changing a diaper, I throw on like Sesame Street on the iPhone. I triple click the side button, and he can't change anything. I just give him the phone, and he's just sitting oh, there. How the hell am I supposed to know that thing? Wait. Okay. Uh, I don't, my phone's yeah. the camera. What Stop. what is it called? Guided access mode. Guided access. Write that down. <laughs> right, right. Well, I guess down. it's being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be okay. I think we'll be if we have some history yeah, of it. Yeah. All he wants to do, he all he wants to do is hold it, and then I what? throw on like Sesame Street or something, and then and then he can't he can't like just swipe around and change it. So even my daughter, who's three, right? Like, and she knows how to work the iPad and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But she she has her uh, these games that she plays that are alphabet games and whatever but she gets really pissed off when she accidentally like clicks out of the screen yeah and yeah. she, yeah, she does this banshee scream that like boils my blood <laughs> and I, I don't know why it makes me so mad but because normally she's very articulate and she's polite and everything else but she whenever like something goes wrong on the screen she flips the fuck out and it makes me so angry exactly <laughs> yeah. see this sounds wow. amazing. All right, well, I have to hit this hit button. That, hit that button. That's what she said. So that was a game changer. Guided access, man. Not bad. I actually didn't even. I probably I didn't, didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know either. I so love this. Where, like, my, my wife was like, I can't change his diaper anymore. And he kicks and screams. I'm like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I got it all under control. Look at you. He's like, oh, really? You got this? And I'm like, yeah, I got this. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> I love it. Guided that's, access. That's fantastic. Man, I'm looking it up right now. I don't Amazing. Have an iPhone. Danny, what, how, what is it on the Google phone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'll get back What's it on the Pixel, Danny? I'll, you know? I'll follow up. I'll follow yeah, up with well, an email on that. Yeah, that's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, that's is amazing. Awesome. I, I've never heard of this and I'm so intrigued. Yeah, I'm going to mess with right, it. I'll mess with this. Sure. I just found it. So, okay. Then you're accessible. Mike, what do you got? I definitely don't have guided access. Oh, that's well. okay. I definitely don't have tidy whiteys either. Thanks. Perfect. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I mean, it will, you know, Penel like Penelope's hair is now long, like it's far down, and yeah. I really struggle with like getting her hair. Like, cause you know, now she does this with her every time she's like walking, she goes like this, and her hair is like not pulled back. So she's always like, you know, like the whole thing with her forearms. It's really cute. Um, I, I mean, this just maybe happened maybe three or four months ago. Penelope just happened to maybe love beanies. So in the morning when Carrie be like, can you go get her? And like, I, you know, maybe I'll bring coffee in bed, whatever. Carrie's, I'm doing the morning shift. Um, I, I, it's, I struggle with getting her hair and like pulling it back and it's like tough. getting it three ties. And it I just, I can't really, I'm not good at it. That, that's me. That's, that's scared me about having mm -hmm. a girl. It's life. really, and they're like, they're, and that's when they don't like getting their hair pulled back because you don't know how hard you're pulling it. And yeah. they're in their ornery. And um, I just started throwing a beating on her. And Penelope huh. loves beanies. She doesn't take them off. Huh. So, I don't know. It's not, I don't know if it's really a dad hack, but it it's absolutely. absolutely. Dude, you're so that why we're buying Penelope Bird and beanies now? You're, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, we got a uh, birthday present. Dude, you're yeah, solving we got, the problem. Uh, we got two. One, you got Cooper. Well, now we should get a couple extra for their kids. We got, uh, we're going to do the baby ones too. So All we right. Get so we got to get suburban dad beanies. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. telling you, man, Carhartt, get Carhartt beanies. They're great. Yeah. yeah. That's the way to go. So, Mike, I'll tell you this, too. Uh, I just thought of this. So, beanies, that's amazing. I'm going to try that because I also struggle with my daughter's hair. My daughter's got all this hair, and it's down, like, middle of her back, and she's, she does the yeah, – yeah. Yeah, 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 eyes and everything. You know, uh, so something that my <laughs> wife did since she was, like, I don't know, probably six months old, and it, it boiled my blood when she first did it. But I let it go, and to this day we still do it. Is we actually have a Bose subscription, 
<laughs> so oh, that's actually interesting. So once a month, we get a little package. It's a nice pink little package in the mail that says, uh, you know, whatever Sloan's name on it. My daughter's name is Sloan. So her, it comes with her name on it. And she gets themed bows and she gets so excited that she lets you do her hair. And so my whole family, it's called a bow drop that we get. And so when we go out and get the mail and we'll be like, hey, look what we got. And even my sons were like, bow drop, you know, and it's so yeah, funny. Yeah. She gets so excited. <laughs> no, it's funny. Right, Sloan, that's is that's that's that. Sloan is my goddaughter. Sloan is my sister's oh, uh, really? Sloan. And she's actually born on the same day as me. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. She's three. January seventh. Oh, yeah, so yeah. March, yeah. July. My uh, so my niece Penelope, her hair is same yeah, thing. She's, she's got, she's got, got a head of hair. Yeah, she has curly hair, and it's like so thick. And my brother was always buying her the headbands. The headbands, yeah. And she yeah. always wears them to this day. I mean, she's always wearing a headband. But it's funny with her; she wears it like over her, like on her forehead. Mm -hmm. It's like it's down, so yeah. you get the bow hanging off the side. It's hilarious. But well, Sloan always used to do this thing, like uh, even so we we've had the bow. The, I call it the bow drop. The bow drop. It for, bow drop. I'm going to look at that, by the way. I think that's sad. Yeah, I'll, I'll she's getting to an age. I think she's probably like six months off or seven. She's Lucky. getting there. Three Excuse years me. old, probably. She, she gets really, really, yeah, Sloan's three. So she gets really, really excited about it. And then she wants to, like her pretty bow or, you know, like right <laughs> now we just got her uh, her Thanksgiving bows. And so there's like one with turkeys cool. on it. And there's one, you know, they're, whatever. It's cute. So <laughs> I've got this like. We, we get them once a month. I've got this box. I say you have a, a huge Just box filled, filled with those. And they're good quality, and they're really nice. And um, Does she use them more than once? All the time. Okay, good. All the time. So it's worth it, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, and it. in the summer, you get <laughs> swimming bows, and they're like these like plasticky bows that you can wear in the pool. It's fantastic. You there know? you go. Uh, but she, she does. She gets excited about it because she went through this little phase where she wanted her hair like in her face. I'm like, Sloan. And it was like summertime. And she's a sweaty girl, and I feel bad for passing that trade on to her. <laughs> but <laughs> she, it'd be just like matted to her face. I'm like, Sloan, let me at least put a bow in. And she'd be like, okay, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the hair cool. over the eye could be dangerous. I know. So my cousin, her daughter, had her eye, her hair over her eye all the time. She ended up going cross-eyed. Yeah. She no, that, glasses that's exactly and, yeah. how it can happen. Because like yeah. the depth perception, it was like it was all yeah. thrown off and everything, so. I think you told me that. That's why I, I was did. like, all right. Let's I, think put I, did. A bow like, I remember the look on your face, too. He was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Time for some bows. Yeah. Time for the bow drop. Right. Right. Bow <laughs> drop. Eyes are developing. I mean, like, you know, I mean, yeah, they're, they're actual muscles that like need to exercise, which is sure. crazy. Right now, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's stuff you don't really think about. You get to wear a patch. You know, like if you wear a patch over one eye, like the muscles in the other eye get stronger. Absolutely. It's true, yeah. And it's the kind of stuff you don't really wow. think about. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. We're learning here. Yeah, see? That's, That's what, what we, we do. do here. <laughs> Master class. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike. So what's your second one? I know you said you had two. I know. I actually forgot. No, I had another. I had a, I had a, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> two minutes after I said I had another one, and Danny was like, we were doing that whole spiel with guys like, ah, oh, doing the whole thing. Like, Danny, you got this thing. I go, oh, my God. To myself, I go. What was the other one? <laughs> I totally forgot it. Like I literally forgot. It. Oh, <laughs> I'll well, think hey. of it. I, I'm sure I'll think of it. Like next oh, day at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, of course you will. That that'll that'll that's make how it sense. Goes. Like three in the morning, you'll wake up from a dead sleep. Like that's right. what it was. There's my oh, dad. I, I, it was, this wasn't a big one, actually. <clears throat> sorry about that. I do remember it was. Uh, so Penelope's like just got into scooting. Like you know, like when she's on her little John Deere and she can like literally sit on it and scoot, like yeah. fly down the road. Right. She's yeah. obsessed. So she would like, I don't know if you guys went through this, but like, I don't know. I was like, this was like the craziest thing. Like she had her like set roots. So she would come down the driveway flying. I'm like, whoa, like the road, I got to watch the road. And then we have sidewalks. So we have sidewalks all like around the house and even like our neighbors and you can cross and there's sidewalks. And then she would always go right and then take another right at the, the uh, next street. But then she would go all the way down and then it's like a main road. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and so when we would try to stop her, she would have these huge meltdowns, like right. massive, massive meltdowns. So Carrie's like, I hate when she takes a right out of the driveway. And I go, me too. The right, that's not, that's not good. And so we took us a while to figure it out. And finally, I, I, I don't know, we, we were normally just let like, in her grab her scooter or her scoot thing in the, the garage and she would go. And then finally, I'm like, dude, I'm just grabbing this thing and I'm bringing it to the left. And I would walk it maybe five feet to the left in front of my neighbor's house, put it down, and then she'd go left. So 
I don't know. I was just thinking that. I don't think it's a dad hack. I just it thought it's a dad. You know what the dad hack is there? Sorry, I it's, have to do it. Yeah, it's outsmarting the two year old. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> it's really and what it is. And like, we but we out overcomplicate things all the time. And at the end of the day, if you can just say to yourself, like, maybe I'll just be smarter than the two year old. Because look, look, I, 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 at least for me, I'm very well aware that at some point my kids will be much smarter than me and it's going to be a lot sooner than it should be. <laughs> Math class. Right, right. And so, like, look, if you can solve a problem by walking five feet, like, good on you, man. That's great. <laughs> Oh, I never. And, I, and by the way, when I told Carrie, I'll go, oh, Carrie, you know the whole scooter issue? Fixed it. Yeah, I solved it. <laughs> Fixed it. No yeah, big yeah, deal. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I go, no, no, no. I go, Carrie, that just, what you got to, you know, you know, the wise, like, they don't like that. And you're like, yeah, Carrie, just walk to the left, like, five feet, no problem. No. And she was like, nope. just kind of pissed off. No. It. It's really funny. <laughs> Gotta love that. Oh man. Meanwhile, she probably spent the whole night before like six hours Googling like how to like <laughs> Yeah, right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> the crazy thing too is the early intervention. We actually started to have some early intervention through the same. And it was interesting. And I thought it was just awesome because it's not it's nothing really about the child. It's like event intervention for the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of the things, I'll be honest, it's one of the it's been Awesome. And it's kind of weird with COVID, like they come in, but sometimes they, you know, but it's, you know, and I'll, some of the things I've found that's amazing is like, dude, just sometimes you just have to shut your mouth. And if they want to open something, it's like open, like, you know, it's more like gestures. Like you would know better. I mean, Ian, you would right. know better. Like, right. Like yeah. it's yep. the gestures, right? Yep. Yeah. And I, I've seen such a progression in her vocab, like getting, she's so close to really spitting out like sentences mm -hmm. um and it's been just from a it's mostly us you know i just found that really interesting it's mostly on the parents not it's, always, it's always about the parents I, I and i mean you know that's not to that's not to knock anyone but it's literally always about the parents the kids are going to adapt to whatever we put in front of them and and the the methods that we use um I, I shouldn't say always, 90% of the time, probably, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it is like, I know a lot of times when we run, we'll run like trainings and we'll run, well, we call them like, uh, um, what did we used to call them? We, it's been so long since we've been able to do them, but like, we'll do like parent meetups and things like that. And like, we secretly are teaching parents how to like do things that we want their kids to be <laughs> able to do because yeah. it, it's just mirroring, mirroring what we do, you know, in preschool or in the toddler room, whatever. Um, and, it, and it's just all about um, training parents to think the way that we've been taught, Yeah, and, which is not natural, right? Like, no, and that's, that's why we have a business right. is because not everyone is trained that way. And, and I'm grateful for that. But um, if we can get parents to think a little bit on that, that side of it, instead of just like, why don't you understand that? <laughs> Well, what do you want? You want, milk? Too. you want milk? <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Like, and, and we forget it sometimes and it's hilarious, but um, and I think that if you can understand it, like you're okay. Yeah. Right. It's, it's when you don't understand it and you're constantly pissed off about it. It's like, okay, guess what? Like, it's not going to get any better if you don't like change and you don't figure it out. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, but yeah, I, again, there's no right way. So, you know, so yeah, that's fantastic. I thought that was, a, that was just to me, that was a really interesting the lady comes in and she's like, and she's so nice. And we, she's here all the time now, maybe like, I don't know, once every two weeks or something like that. And she was like, nah, for the first day, she, I'm, I'm like, oh, this is great. What are you going to teach her? Is she going to talk? She goes, nah, dude, I'm going to teach you how to figure it out. And, yeah. I go, and I go, what? She goes, wait a minute. I didn't start yeah, Wait, wait, wait. This isn't for me. <laughs> and, I, and she was so right. I mean, even that, like, even on, when I'm sitting with Karen, she's like, nope. Oh, but, like, I don't know, just found it really interesting. That's it not, is. It's, no, it's great. It's absolutely great. All right, and do a proud oh, dad moment. a proud dad moment. Yeah. All right, so we do a segment of the show uh, on top of the dad hack, which we call the uh, proud dad moment. So it's trying to find out something that you're proud of, whether it be proud of yourself, proud of your child or your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like really think about something that your kid has done or you've done that you're proud of. So 
I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, I, I mean, look, it, just your they, typical, they happen all the time, right? They and really like, do. Whether we think about them it's or not. It's a small not, moment. Um, what the, the whole point of it is, I think, or, or we think as dads, we need to be more in tune with like celebrating the small victories. Yes. Because it can be very easy to mm-hmm. get consumed with work and just say, oh, mom's got it or nanny's got it or whatever. Or grandma's got it. And if we celebrate the small victories and be proud of what we're doing as fathers, mm-hmm. um, I think that's going to perpetuate being more involved in the future. Uh, and and again, I, I think that's the whole point for, for what we're trying to yeah. promote. So, like, like a small example for, uh, for me is uh, I have two boys. They're four and three years old. And uh, my son, Sam, who's the youngest, comes home and he opens up his backpack. And my older son comes in. He's like, Ben, what did you do today? He's like, oh, let me see what you worked on. And he pulls out his artwork and he's like, oh my gosh, Ben, that is so amazing. You did such a great job. And I'm like, I'm very proud of the way that my older son treats my youngest. Like he's just such a good big brother. Like it's just such so, a cool thing to see. So again, and, and I don't know if it's the like uh, early childhood educator in me or yeah. what, but like to me, that's a proud dad moment for yourself and your wife yeah because sam is mimicking what, how what, we act to him. how you act to him yeah and so he's taking that and saying and, and it's also proud of him for oh doing absolutely it because he clearly he's, cares about yeah he that. does but like again when you when you kind of like go next level and think about these things mm-hmm. you you tend to do more of it and you tend to uh uh I guess, do things that are going to incite those behaviors. And, and I think that that's just good all around. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good ethos. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. You're thinking about the, the greater good. I mean, Daniel, I'll go first this time. So I'm not going to back up to something you're going to say. After, this. <laughs> after, you're, after you're like, you learned your lesson with the underwear. By the way, that was a killer feature. Like how the hell you even find that? Like, how many people have iPhones? I've never heard that feature once. Yeah, I've never heard that. I'm, I'm really excited. To very, try. very good. That was a very good one. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I got, I think it's not even a proud dad moment. I think it's just, I gave my wife is like a rock. I mean, her mom's maiden name is Pap Rocky. There, her nickname is The Rock. Oh, nice. Uh, she is, my wife is The Rock. I mean, this is not easy. We started a business when she's four months pregnant. Yeah. Like, I want to do a whiskey. She, and she was like, no, quite like, now granted we've gotten her involved and she does a lot. She does all of our social media and she's, you know, we, both of our wives, they come down to Kentucky, they see it, they're in it. Like they're, they're, they're believers. They're on board. Like this wouldn't work without them. But more importantly, I mean, they're like the backbone of what, you know, of raising our, you know, raising Penelope, you know, and I think yeah. to me, that's, that's all, that's all I think about. That's, I mean, that's incredible because yeah. the, the, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, we're, we're a big believer in fathers, right? Fatherhood. But part of being a father is understanding that mom plays such a role. And like, like, I know I would be, <laughs> I, would be the, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing without my wife, you know? Um, and so I, I think that's good. I think it's good to recognize. And again, I, and I guess the hope is that, you you were forced to sit there and think about that a little bit and and hopefully you, you do something nice for your wife and say like <laughs> listen thank you because you really do hold it and hopefully you do it all the time right yeah and like um but but i think that's what's fun is is and it works a little bit better when we're in person and you know, we'll have somebody in the studio and they're like oh all right yeah i was actually really proud that that happened um so but i think that's fantastic i and i actually love when guys are like you know, I'm really proud of my wife because she's yeah. just amazing because they are and we probably don't give them enough credit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I yeah, offline, I was actually going to be like, do you guys do like personal one-on-one sessions? <laughs> <laughs> You're always I like, I'm, like, I'm like, this is like, <laughs> yeah, right? This, this is has been very like, therapeutic, actually. Off the chest. <laughs> really? I'm like, um, I'll, Ian, I got yourself picking offline about just <laughs> Perfect. <a> one-on-one. <laughs> like, wait, you, you want to talk about no i mean it, it, it feels good i think it's good to talk about your emotions absolutely i think when we started and, and listen when this started it was never supposed to be that like that was never like our we never had like a, a thesis of like we need to get men to like 
understand <laughs> and connect with their emotions. And, and you know what I mean? It was never like that. No. Um, but I think that him and I, I don't know, we were probably like 15 episodes in. We're like, dude, this is kind of nice. Like, I yeah. feel good after we you talk really about do. Like, things. Like you guys said, this is therapeutic. Every time yeah. it's like sitting down and be talking about what's going on in your life. And I mean, and it's just kind of breaking it down, yeah, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and the, the reality is, is that like you guys, your guys' kids are younger than ours or, or at least the, for the older ones. Um, and so hopefully you'll take something away and be like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And look, how much can you get in a two hour conversation? Who knows? Um, but I mean, that's the whole point of like the whole show or the whole podcast is to say, okay, if I listen to this every once in a while, then like. Maybe I'll come up with something that makes a lot of sense and I'll use it at home. And, and, and that's been fun to see in practice. Yeah. I love our, it. Like, like Mike said, like both our wives got pregnant when we started the company and like, you know, I don't think, I know, I know, I don't think my wife signed up for what was about to happen. You know, like <laughs> yeah. her, her life, our life's changed with just the, having a baby alone and then right you're jumping into this and you know my time is like totally gone you know like so she my wife doesn't get enough credit um but i don't give her enough credit probably <laughs> oh, and, and, hey. you know you wouldn't be the only one yeah you know absolutely what I, mean? I know i don't it, i it, i don't know if it's like i don't know if it's like a hard thing it's like it's like a guy to sit there and be like you know what babe you're great yeah. i appreciate everything you're doing we don't do it enough we you're don't right. say it enough and we i don't, don't know like i said it I don't know if that's a guy thing that we just don't yeah. do it enough. Well, but I think it's probably a human thing, right? It's human like, nature. Like, you know, I, I, I probably, to be fair, I don't think that dads get enough credit. You know what yeah. I mean? But I think it goes both ways. And so if you can start and you can be the one to say, to step up and be like, hey, thank you. Here's, yeah. I, I'm very thankful for what you do for our family. And then maybe yeah. that starts to get reciprocated. And then everyone's just happier, right? Because you're, you're kind of being open with your gratitude. It's nice to have that gratitude validation is fantastic. too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you definitely, well, I've noticed like you give it back, it comes back like a boomerang. Something yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Some yeah. people wait for the boomerang to come to them first. It's yeah. true. No, just sometimes take, you got to throw take it. Take that sucker and throw it. Yeah. Bring it. Frisbee golf style. Dan, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, we, yeah. we, we check out on the weekends though. And that's, yeah. I think, always been important. We go, real hard monday through friday yeah you have to you gotta your battery's gotta recharge man sure. yeah it's not human it's biology yeah and we didn't in the beginning though i mean in like in the first year and a half we were like like crazy oh by the way i got another tasting saturday well what mm -hmm. time well i'm doing one one to four and then another one from like five to eight yeah. but i'll be home at like 10 dayline ish <laughs> right. No, that, that doesn't that doesn't really work. But now it's a little bit different. I mean, I think we Shared got a calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, calendar. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think being 100%. good, be going back to the dad thing, I think it's like the way you reciprocate it is being like, I got Sunday. Take Sunday. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's absolutely. Dad, time. Yeah. And even if you got to put her in the car seat and just drive around for nine hours. I love but, driving around. Fine. I mean, I'm fine That's with that. Fine. It's a great dad hack. Around all the time. And we'll go, we go find like, and actually this is something he taught me. It was like, go find a random park that you've never been to. Yeah. And just go like just drive, make it, make it a fun adventure. And we do that. And we're, we're very fortunate. We have like really nice state parks around here, like all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just drive in one direction and we'll go and like, Hey, that, that looks like a cool place. Or I'll look it up on my phone. Like where's the next, the, cl the closest one. That's and cool. I'll go. And we go and, and we just like park and all right, let's go explore. And they love it. Yeah. I, so I learned that yeah. from my dad. My dad was always good about yep. taking us on our little adventures, like on the weekends, like he would take me and my brother somewhere and we would do something so stupid. Like, you know, you just go to like a park, like out in the woods. And we, I mean, I always remember these things. Uh, a good example of it is my dad would take us to like a random like pavilion and we would cook out, we'd do marshmallows and all that shit. And we would just sit and hang out on the wilderness right and you remember that so. and so my dad took his next door neighbor and his kids with us one time and his and this guy goes 
I had the best time of my life tonight. He's like, I don't know why I didn't do this in the first 10 years of these kids' lives. Like, yeah. he's like, this was the best thing that we've ever done. Yeah. Like stupid it's little so things simple. like that. It's the simple like, things. Like we think all it's the time. It's not like go spend all this to, money yeah. and go do some crazy shit. Just you do something so simple. And that's the kind of stuff that you remember with your dad. Right. I, I mean, or parent, agree. like whatever it is. But right. yeah. It's so that's crazy, true. man. It's like, we're definitely going to have some one-on-one sessions. This is like, <laughs> Absolutely. Man, like, you know, it's so funny. You could go on these extravagant vacations. You know, the vacation I remember the most is when my stepfather and I went to the Boundary Waters in northern Minnesota. And, was, you know, I just remember canoeing back at three in the morning and looking up and you could see the entire Milky Way. Yeah. And where we, you know, where I live, there, you know, there's a lot of light pollution. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Let's sure. It. And I've never seen the Milky Way like, so unbelievable it was yeah right. just, it was like i was like 11 years old yeah i'll never ever forget it now i mean to this day i'm like oh have you ever been to the boundary waters yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean it's just it's funny you said that it's i mean that's very true but it's yeah. so true i mean you know you can play in disney all you want and you can you know whatever you can you can do all those kind of things and those things are a lot of fun and there's a, there's definitely a place for those things um we we love going to disney and things like that um, but I think the random go do something on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon that you you didn't even plan on doing and you go find a picnic bench somewhere and you you do something like that. Um, I, I just think that there's something pure about it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's the kind of stuff you remember. What about like going to like with Danny? I'm just talking Danny. It's like, what, remember we took our Penelope and Cooper and we like, took them to different liquor stores and we put up shelf talkers. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, Steve got some really good pictures. That could be kind of fun. Like, studio. oh, we're in a different town, and this is new, and like, we get to check COVID, off. I used to take Cooper. And, you know, yeah, win-win for everybody. Dude, you think that's fun? I mean, and it is funny, but I mean, that's also so true. Like, uh, we we actually talk about it quite a bit. Is like stuff with our jobs or stuff with the podcast. It's like, could I get it done a lot more efficiently? Yes, absolutely. But I took my son with me. And he had so much fun yeah. hanging out and, you know, uh, fixing some drywall at one of the daycares or whatever it was that I had just, I had to get it done on the weekend. You know, you yeah. can't do it during the week. So I had to get it done and I'll take him and, and he'll help. And, and when I say help, he really gets in the way and makes a mess yeah. and everything else. But <laughs> that means the world what? to him. We had one-on-one time and that was a lot of fun. Um, That's what means the world to them. So, I mean, I mean you, you know, you joke about setting up displays and things like that, but it's it's really true. I mean, they they will remember that. Love it. I feel like that's maybe a good, that's a good point. You should do it. I mean, I think that's that's really good bonding time. And great, so we could get some good social media content. Oh, yes, absolutely, <laughs> man. Market the shit. <laughs> like, no, this is actually Penelope. Yeah, this is this is Penelope. The real Penelope. Working. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's funny, man. Yeah, it, it's it's really a good time. So I mean, yeah, it, it's it's fun to reflect on that, and hopefully, like our hope is always that people reflect on things that they're doing while they're doing it, so that way they can pass it on to the next guy that's having a kid. Yeah, you know, because that's how the the community of of fathers becomes better. Yeah, goes back to what you were saying before, how like one week of their life is, you know, ex percent of their life right. and like one week of our life is you know uh, right <laughs> so like, snap of the fingers it goes, man. it's like a blink for us but it's like an eternity for them yeah a hundred percent like they, they i think that they're very good at well look they don't they they haven't been kicked down by the world yet they haven't <laughs> been consumed with with responsibility and debt and you know you what's know, going on in envy and Everything. all those kind of things that we have right and so like they have the ability to take a situation for what it is and and take in and like like ask your kids to go describe what they did today and and, and don't say it that general so if they went to school or if they went to a park ask them to to describe the playground that they were at you know and they like they can describe things that's just amazing like oh yeah you know there was there was uh, you know white sand over there at the play at that sandbox yeah, stuff you would and, never notice and there was a blue truck over there and like we're gonna walk by then and like yeah there's a fucking playground yeah we're like we had you know, <laughs> yeah, we gotta be somewhere we're too busy we gotta be somewhere in ten minutes so you gotta yeah go. we're too we gotta, busy we gotta move. really stuff. that's but pretty the cool kids, they're gonna look at they're gonna tell you what color the truck was and they're gonna tell you what color the shovel was 
and they're going to tell you what color the slide was and did it turn or did it go straight? Was there bumps on it? And, and like, I try and look at that and say, maybe I need to be a little bit more like that sometimes. And, and it, it really and brings you really back down focus, to earth. Like, you know, the small things are like the things that you miss out on all the time. The, it's just details, the, you know, life through the eyes of a, a toddler or just a kid is like, it's gold. Yeah. I mean, that's like the best thing in the world is seeing through their eyes. Cause yeah. I mean, they appreciate things a hell of a lot they, more than we do. Cause we're, what, what are we thinking about? We're thinking, we're thinking like, all right, well, in three hours I got to be here and I got to do this and I have to do, you know, like you're just like, right. let's move, let's get this over with. We got to, guys two go play, more, go do this. Two more down the slide yep. and let's go. Yep. <laughs> we're moving. It's the grind. Yeah. It's the yeah. Grind. It really is. And look, the, the, the grind is also good by the way. Like, you it's, know what I mean? It's neat. I'm a big proponent of getting your shit done, right? Like yeah. do whatever you gotta do to, to yeah. right? But if you can take some time to so appreciate the, the small details, moments, try yeah. and look at it like a toddler. Yeah, it's fun. It's, like <laughs> it's a lot more fun. That thing they call the balance. My feet the other way. Balance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The car. That, I mean, uh, Carrie was so mad about that that I kind of <laughs> solved that problem. That was a big. Deal. But you know what's funny? I always I was think, trying to say this before, and I'm like. One thing that pissed me off about having a kid, and it wasn't, that actually came up for us really. No, that's great. I love I'm that. I'm mad about but the one thing that we had, when we had a child, you know, everybody we ask, we go, what's it like? Like, what's it like? Oh my God, it's amazing. Oh my God, it's amazing. Right. And Carrie and I are very like transparent. We're like, bro, it fucking sucks. It's fucking hard. They're yep. tough. They suck. No one ever, we always, we still to this day always say this. We go, no one ever teed it up like it was going to be. Meaning yeah. I'm not looking for like a playbook. I'm just looking for somebody to have the balls to be like, sure. They're a pain in the ass. He's real about it. Yeah. It's not every kid is fucking perfect. No. I'll be honest. Even all of our friends, they've all had kids. They all, and they, everyone was like, oh my God, wait, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's- and I'm like, all of a sudden we get in the knee, like we bring, come home from the hospital and I'm like, my mother-in-law's here. We're screaming. Everyone's screaming at each other. <laughs> yeah. brought this up. No one told me about this. You got movie. diarrhea from the shitty no chicken fingers in the hospital. Like shit everywhere. <laughs> like, this is nuts. Like what? Like and I'm like, I don't know. I just always found that like we to this day we always say that we go. Well, that that that's a that's social media culture, right? Like we want to show the best, the best parts, parts of it, yeah. and so like of oh yeah, it's amazing, um, and and that's honestly part of the reason. Like again. I remember us reading books and like, I'm like showing Steve like this chapter in this book. I'm like, dude, this is what we're supposed to be expecting. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Like, what do you think it's going to be like? Well, I don't know. Let's fucking figure it figure out. It out. Right? And like, it was complete opposite of that. But, but it is like, we, we always want to show the best, right? Like mm-hmm. whether it's the vacation or, or the car or, you know, if you, can, if you can sit there and be honest about what's going on in your life and how crazy your kids are and how chaotic your life is, people relate to that a lot more. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know what? I mean, that's ex- you know what? This, this feels great because I'm not the only one that feels like he's losing his fucking mind right now. <laughs> like a good example of that is um, a friend of ours was over today, uh, one of my wife's friends, and my kids are both on a terror. They're destroying the house. They're screaming. They're running around. And she goes, Oh my God, this makes me feel so much better. <laughs> yeah. She's like, my kids are exactly the same. She goes, I felt, she's like, I thought I was losing my mind. And we, it's like, you know what? They're all the same. Everybody's losing their mind. Yeah, we we and we're all in a while, age. but we used to have like this, like almost a competition of not like how great your life is, but like, <laughs> Like it would be like a Saturday morning and I'd be like, oh my God. And I'd like, just take a small video of my kids just destroying screaming my and house just, yeah. and screaming everywhere. And be like, oh yeah, dude, watch this. Yeah. And like, and it'd be in like real time. It'd be like Snapchat or whatever. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, watch this. I'm like, all right, yeah, we're yeah. all in the same boat. Like, we're all, we're, we're all losing our minds. on the cabinet. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah my kids aren't sitting on the couch like everywhere. doing flashcards and like, <laughs> yeah. and being well behaved all day long. No, they're, Excuse they're, me, daddy. Can you change the channel, of please? Of course, son. Yeah. Thank you for dad, asking. Can you bring me more tea? Yes. Any more tea, dad? Yeah, I don't <laughs> know why they're British when they're really good. <laughs> they're always British when they're good, right? <laughs> but, daddy, you remember that. All of our friends, nobody gave us any hard advice of course no. not well the only person that gave me hard advice was you and carrie <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what was, see that's what i had with ian is ian was uh like what seven or eight months seven, ahead eight of months, me so yeah. i'm like he's like and i'm sitting there watching i'm like this is insane yeah this is chaos yeah. so i yeah. 
for me, it was a little bit easier to try to figure it out because I saw somebody else doing it. My brother too, my older brother had a, a daughter. So I, I got to kind of see how that was not expecting just rainbows and butterflies. Like everything's going to be perfectly fine. The kid's going to sleep all night. They're going to wake up. They're going to be all beautiful and cherry and everything's going to be you know it's it literally perfect. never happened no it doesn't happen <laughs> like hey man how's everything going oh they sleep through the night everything's perfect no it's not i know you're lying to me everything's terrible <laughs> you just reminded me danny you know my brother my older brother dude he was he, he actually kind of but he never was never advice i'd be on the phone with them and be like well god damn it not now like, yeah, right, right, right. very good father he's like really really involved but he's like really funny and he's like dude fucking kids like it's unbelievable that's the secret is like you can be a really good father and also fucking hate your kids <laughs> yeah. like, right like, and, and like, like scott he always that. says it. He's like, right, though. it's not like you hate them all the time but there are moments where i'm like get the fuck away from me <laughs> yeah you know I, I, I just want to have a okay. I want to have a conversation with somebody. Leave me alone for five right. minutes. Go play with your brother. Leave me alone. I don't right. want to be around you right now. Don't talk to me. Oh I mean, I'm like that with most people in my life. <laughs> so why would my kids be any different? It's true. I never even thought about that. That's really funny, though. Oh my gosh. That oh, man. man, that's real life, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about, right? That's real life. No, no, it's true. Yeah. Good whiskey, good fa families. Like, it's fun. Yeah. You guys sure. are doing some damage over there on those bottles. Yeah, I know. I need to stop because uh, <laughs> I got to work like, tomorrow. Yeah, turn that rosé around. Let me we see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to save, well, we're going to probably review all of them. I don't know. You think? I think we should. Yeah, For sure we should. Maybe we'll do one review with all three. I'm in. Although Trust they, me. I like all three of them. They get skewed. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, this is this is amazing. This bourbon's good. But they're all good. So they're we're good. Still, you know, it's funny. We're still tinkering with who we are, like our, like our identity, our ethos. And we always say that, but like I, a lot, you know, I think it's just very organically. Like we're a family. Like we want, like we kind of view our products as part of the family and we got something for everybody. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a fun way of doing it. And it probably sets you up for, success I, I mean look if you can be happy with your product and you know if you two can agree on your product and be happy with it and you send it out to market and and you get some good results back like okay cool tinker with it a little bit see what you come up with and and great um i think when you when you put yourself in a corner and say well i'm going to make the best rose cask finish well okay Maybe you do this year, but maybe next year, for whatever reason, you can't get the right barrels or, you know, there's too many things that you can't control, uh, I guess. And again, I don't know anything about the, the no, you're business, spot but like, on, by the way, you know, just do what feels right and have fun with it. And I don't know, I, I feel like listening to your guys' story, that's what you've done from the beginning. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, I think it's working. So I, I don't know what my opinion is worth, but like, I feel like it's working. So like, just stick with that and like, never, I mean, I, I've done that in the daycare world. And I think that you and I have had like real conversations about that with the podcast is just don't get too big for who you are and you'll just keep growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So well said. Um, we don't, we don't try and have too high of expectations and we, we know who we are and we have fun with it. So, and I think that's kind of like how you guys run. It seems like at least. No, you hundred percent like yeah. we like we're just we're still getting into it that's it fun. yeah, yeah fun. we're having fun i mean yeah. working hard and having fun like yeah you just gotta keep grinding though right. it's grind yeah. oh 100 yeah. it, it, it is a grind yeah i can imagine you know uh well, for, for you all, for everybody everything yeah. like you yeah. know running businesses it's sure Sucks. It's, it's yeah, it's tough. It's tough work and people that running a bill like Danny like, ounce like, receivables, like, it can't, like cutting checks, all this stuff. It's just like right. all the little stuff yeah. that nobody thinks That's about. You don't think about like it's, it's awful. And, yeah, right. for sure. So, you know, you you do it though and you have fun with it and you don't take yourself too seriously, and then you you know, make your kid go left instead of right, and then you have a good day about it. <laughs> throw on throw on your tidy whiteies and watch state line, you're good. <laughs> Danny and I, but I'm being serious. Danny and I, we may need to like hire you guys. We may need like to have yeah. we're always available, guys. Like I, I don't even care. Like I don't get. I didn't even know what I was getting. I'm on a product. Like, 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 I feel like very good. Like I'm like good. Yeah, good. I'm happy. We're really happy. Totally, 
We work for uh, whiskey, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get you plenty. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I feel like we talked about stuff that felt good to talk about. Yeah. Good. That's yeah, it was good. really refreshing. I mean, like, just the whole point. Yeah. That's yeah, no, and I appreciate that a lot. We appreciate you saying that, man. <laughs> well, you guys were a lot of fun to talk to. Um, for sure. Again, we've said it multiple times, but you're making some good whiskey, which we enjoy <laughs> I mean, thoroughly. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, thanks so much for hanging out with us for a little bit because this is, uh, I don't know, it, it's its fun to branch out. You know, we don't love the, the, the Zoom thing, um, but it's kind of also amazing that here we are in a world that we can talk to, do this. to you yeah. for a couple hours and... You know, we would have never been able to do that. And so then we would have never gotten to know each other and that would suck. So, um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Absolutely. We love what you guys are doing, man. Your guys' story is amazing. And it's, yeah, it's, you guys have a phenomenal product. Make bourbon. It really (laughs) kind of does. (laughs) We'll just check it out. We'll see what you do. Well, we'll let them make it. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You guys, honestly, I got to, I mean, this, I won't speak for Danny. Danny could say his piece but i I, this was a like i really enjoyed this conversation i mean this was awesome good thank you the stuff i mean this fellow is really me like i don't know just we said it before just stuff we haven't talked about before so i appreciate it absolutely very good yeah whiskey is like afterthought which i i like yeah we love whiskey but the dads make the whiskey so yeah you know i think that's what's really cool (laughs) there you go (laughs) so Dan and Danny started this. He's a tidy witty guy. Yeah, he started right off the rip, man. Dude, that was such a good intro because I think it just set the tone. It really did. It made everything just open up and we're good to go. We could be. Yeah, so. I love it. Imagine man. it's a 10 second podcast. We go to listen to it when it, po- it goes out. It's like, what? I wore Teddy Whitey's cut. Done. Yeah, done. So, so we do do clips. So I'm probably going to clip <laughs> no. that. might be the one. <laughs> Danny's like, fuck. <laughs> I should have said that. No, for sure. No, That's filter. awesome, man. Filter. Filter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have one. We'll get no, big, no maybe we'll get a big influx of tidy whitey fans. Yeah, yeah. see? <laughs> well, and again, then we can make our own we can tidy whitey suburban, suburban dads, dads. tidy whiteys. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Whiteys. You know, well, we're working. And we'll throw a P out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> an LPP up there. Right on the P. <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody reaches out and says that they had the same issue, let me know. <laughs> you guys know that somebody else might do the same thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll be sure to let you know. Well, uh, <laughs> wrote that down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wrote that down. We'll be in touch. Keep you posted. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much. This is uh, again so much fun. Um, can't can't say enough about what you guys are doing. Uh, and so, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Keep yep. experimenting and keep following your gut, honestly. Because if this was your first attempt. <laughs> and then, like, you figured this thing out. And this barrel strength is amazing. Oh, so man. if you, you guys, guys are doing that, then you, you, you clearly got something You guys are killing it, man. Thank you, man. No, I appreciate it. Um, so, all right. So we're going to do our little sign-off real quick. If you guys hold on, we'll talk a little bit off air. Uh, but, no, uh, if you're watching or listening, please make sure you follow Penelope Bourbon. Uh, you guys, Instagram, socials, all of that kind of good stuff, just at Penelope Bourbon. Mm-hmm. At Penelope Bourbon, we've got a great Instagram. My wife runs it. They really do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Follow them on all their stuff. Uh, so, and then follow us, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. Wherever you get your podcast, uh, we download everywhere. those and share them. Um, follow our whiskey reviews because we're going to do one of these. For sure. Uh, or three of these. All three of them. I don't know if we'll, we'll pick do them all night. at once. We'll see what that happens. Might be fun. <laughs> But no, uh, do those. We do those on our blog at www.thetalkingdads.com. And then anything else from you guys? Anything else you want to plug that you're doing, whatever? I mean, we talked about it. I I was just going to say, I'll be honest with you. This was one of them. This was such a refreshing conversation. I'm going to say it again. Like, I mean that sincerely. Like, I feel like good just talking about like our kids and like life and like the shit that's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm outside of Penelope bourbon Mm -hmm, Um, because that's to me that's the hard part like building the business is a pain in the ass the hard part's like happening like in here and uh, you know it just actually was I haven't you know Danny and I chat about it here and there but like I haven't tried about it I just felt it was really refreshing I appreciate it good very good I love to hear that Danny 
<laughs> no, that's good. Nailed it. That's good. No, that's that's cool. We I appreciate sure that. Sure you guys had all your opportunities. So no, like seriously, uh, amazing. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we we've said it a couple times now. So very good. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, you that's right. Anything else? All right, no, we're, we're good. good. So uh, yeah, follow them. Follow us. Have fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And in the meantime, raise, raise good, good humans. humans. Thank you. Peace. Hey guys, if you love what you just heard or watched, and we know you did, do us a solid and hit that thumbs up. Share with your friends and throw us a comment, literally about anything. Your support legit keeps us going. Oh, and don't forget to give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate you.